Rob Bailey. What's up, boys? Yeah. Rob had a massive hit called Beast. Yeah. It was on a movie. Southpaw. Oh, Southpaw. Southpaw. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a powerful motherfucker. Realizing that I can show up in rooms and I can have really cool effects on people or I can be a complete fucking asshole. Yeah, you have that. Jared Soren said he sued us. You guys okay if we get into that? Yeah. From day one, I said, Jared, I don't want a partner. He tried to do this weird hostile takeover. How long was the lawsuit? Bro. 10 years? And what's really sad is he died a few months ago of an overdose. Dude, he freaking just destroyed his life. And then he died alone. Whoa. I don't know anything about this story, and that was heavy. I wasn't planning on crying, so there's that. Cool. I liked it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Heavy Checklist Podcast, where tonight's episode is, uh, I couldn't even tell you what you're going to get. Uh, it's going to be great, though. It's going to be great. It'll be great. But the thing about tonight is, you know how Rogan does his episodes where he's got just, uh, I think it's Protect Our Parks, him and his boys just hang out, him and Shane Gillis, I think Matt McCusker, maybe. Anyways, he just literally, they sit around a table and do a podcast, the Joe Rogan Experience. They just get drunk, and it's like four hours of nonsense, but it's very entertaining. You're not in for four hours of drunk nonsense tonight, but... Nonsense. I could probably commit to about at least an hour. Of nonsense. <laughs> and we're not going to be drinking, no. unless Rob... Will, I don't know what Rob... Oh, speaking of, for those of you uh, audio listeners who aren't seeing what's happening, we have a guest with us tonight, and he's a guest who's been with us before. He's actually one of my favorite guests... One of my favorite people in the world. Ever. Genuinely, like, this guy just makes me happy. Do you just say that all the time to people, or is that, no, like, genuine? he doesn't. I don't he think doesn't. I've ever said He's that. He's never said that That's a podcast. pretty yeah. big. Can you guys cut that for me? I'm going to use that as my intro to everything <laughs> I come over. out with from now on. Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Bailey. What's up, boys? Yeah, here he is. So, Rob, obviously, is just a, a bro, just a good friend of ours. Um, you happen to be in town for something, right? Yeah. Hanging out? No, yeah. not something. Secreting. He was performing his band oh, yeah. live. When was that? Today. Today, yeah. You performed today? Yeah, you missed it. He's, I, he nobody stood, told me about this. I was listening for you in the crowd, and I just... I wasn't there. My heart, my he heart. stood on I'm, a table. He bro, my heart wasn't even there. Like, I wasn't there at no, all, because no, nobody no. told me. He is, he Why wouldn't you tell me about that? He was on top of a table. Wait, hold on. Was this like a, a bar mitzvah or something that people were... <laughs> it, it was a, it was a private a, event? The, the largest uh, real estate bus tour, is that what it's called? Yeah. Red yeah. Suit Realtor put on an event with two or three hundred real estate agents... Rob got so crazy in his folklore music that folk he folklore. It's just folk music. <laughs> folk music. Yeah, it's not. There's a big difference. Folk, yeah. He stood on top of a table and kicked things over while singing. Did you kick something over today? No, I didn't kick anything. I'm did, a polite man. Did Jake kick? You anything are a very over? polite man. Very polite man. Jake definitely didn't kick, no, didn't kick anything. But he did no. get on the table with him, which I, I was that. surprised. I like a couple of golden retrievers. <laughs> Going after a burglar. That's, yeah. <laughs> they're not yeah. going to get you. Yeah. <laughs> they might make you They'll feel good, you. but they're not going to stop give, you. I was trying to give the people a show. How was it? It was good. You yeah. crushed. You were yeah. playing play Rockstar. So I played these really weird. And you know what the weird thing is? Everyone there was like, man, your band's so good. You're really going to make it in music. And I was like, oh, I, I just do music casually on the side as like a joke. <laughs> like it's it's not something I'm, hey, you I, know. I feel like they, if they're going to say that, they should say you're going to make in music again. Because you've already yeah. kind of made it. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. You hey, had some hits. Yeah. Can yeah. we have an announcement here on this podcast? I, Ooh, yeah. Hold on. A Let me big, check with the announcement. Big, hey, hands. Announcements? We, we, no, no. We have an announcement. Are we loud? We have announcement? one. I just don't want to put it out there. I don't, I don't know the announcement. Yeah, I, a couple, I know it couple is. A couple award announcements, then we'll get right Dave, into the sack. Diesel what? Dave knows the announcement. Has, okay. Has to do with you. It has to do with you and the new music. Kind of nervous. Oh, new. Oh, my, my, my project we're uh, uh -huh. resuscitating. He's getting back with Hustle. They get back together. Yeah. And they're doing new yeah, next hardcore week. music. Next Not week. hardcore yes. music. We're, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, you weren't ready for this. No, no, no. Can we find a happy medium no. between hardcore and folklore? You said folklore. I yes. <laughs> All right. You're an idiot. Well, I have three I have three projects, right? So I have Rob Bailey and the Hustle Standard, which has done the best. That's the one that had the big hit on. For those of you who don't know, Rob had a massive hit called I'm a Beast. Yeah. Or Beast. Beast, Beast yeah. Um, and it was on a movie with Mark Wahlberg called The nope. Warrior? No, Southpaw. Nope. Oh, Southpaw, Southpaw. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah. that, that band's been featured everywhere. ESPN. I mean, we've had so many placements. It's like I've lost track. The best cool. collaboration was... Oh, the, yeah, the big one was it the hasn't happened movie yet. with, with, uh, with uh, Buster Rhymes. Buster Rhymes. And, yeah, Tech Nine and everything. Yeah. Oh, you did? Awesome. Yeah. On the same song? Yeah. yeah. They just yeah. did a remix, kind of? Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, that's amazing. I didn't even know that. I think I knew that, but I didn't know that it was with it's a great uh, Busta. Yeah, it's yeah. a great version. <clears throat> it's a great version. Um, and then after that, I started doing my heavy, heavy stuff, which is Kill Rob Bailey, which no one likes because it's way too heavy. Uh, and then Land and Ammo is the folk lore music. Folk lore music. 
Great folklore music. Great folklore. <laughs> it's the best folklore I've ever heard. Yeah. But it's fun because I can just show up with a guitar and uh, we play really odd shows like real estate conventions and uh, no one's ready for it. So it's a very... Uh, no one. It really like does a lot of things for me emotionally because it's so hard because I'm like up there naked just yelling with a guy playing. Yeah, a because guitar. you don't have any any skills to add. No, to the band. I have no skills, right? No, you so, do. You have skills, just not musically. You don't have an no, instrument. No, I'm not talented at all. You're, I would. <laughs> I don't know what I would do if I were you on stage. Yeah. With nothing to fiddle he with. He brings a llama. I would. I yeah. would be playing a fake guitar for sure. Or well, you need dance moves, bro. You've seen my, my dance moves. That's the problem, though. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I can not, teach you, bro. My body doesn't know how. You know teapot. You All know I'm saying, I'm giving you props. That's huge. Oh, thanks, to be able bro. to stand up there yeah. with just you. And like yeah. you're saying, that's yeah. vulnerable. You're naked. You're you're like, this is what I have to offer. It's like, it's, leave it. it's like the scariest thing I've ever done. Yeah. And uh, especially cool. because I'm not playing concerts, right? So they're hearing people talk about buying wholesale real estate. And then next up, they're like, Rob Bailey. And I show up with a guitar <laughs> and they're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and then I play folk music and I yell in their face and they're like this. I don't understand this what's is... I'm not here for a concert. And then I can see their faces, which is another interesting thing because uh, you can see the confusion, which makes it even more, you know, stressful for me. I love so. it. I love it. It's great stuff. Yeah. Thanks boys. It's some of the funnest concerts I've ever been to. But yeah. We're getting the band back together. Getting the band back together. Band That's band a big announcement. Together. Yeah. And that is Rob Bailey and the Hustle Standard? Yeah, we're going to make uh, one song a quarter. So, One song a quarter. Yeah. You know what's crazy about that is um, kind of like the TV show world where it takes so long to create something, to create a song, to write a song, come up with a hit. Um, and then you look at other artists. One good example is a, a friend of ours that we know, uh, NBA Youngboy, right? Bro's cranking out a, like a song a day. Yeah. He is just boom, 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 cranking them out. So it just goes to show that uh, you could you can work three months longer. At, what is that? Ninety times longer than he does to to create a song, and just because the amount of effort that you're putting into that doesn't mean that your song is going to be bigger than his because his songs are hits. He's, yeah, he's dropping hit after hit after what, hit. What do you, I want to get your. I want to know. I'm asking. Is you this now. like an, an anti-inspirational thing? No, 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 no. Because you're going to spend three months, and he makes one in one day, and the shits on you. This is crap. all about the the experience that you're having. Like you just said, it's it, this isn't your only project, obviously. Mm -hmm. But why do you think that is? How does that? Is it because the genre of music of hip hop is lends itself to e like making more songs more quickly? Like it's easier to create a higher volume of songs. Why is that? Because where, why does it, why would it take you a quarter? You know, no, 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 no. <clears throat> it's because we're starting slow. So like Land and Ammo, we can record an app. We can write an album in two weeks and record it in a day. Right. And then like my metal stuff, uh, we just, we wanted to start slow and we really want to take time with, because we don't want to just start putting out music. Right. We w really want to make like fucking bangers. Mm -hmm. And I think in the past when we've made albums, and rappers do this all the time, right? They'll come out with an album and there's 19 songs of trash on there mumbling over a beat. Yeah. And then there's one song that actually gets fucking play. Yeah. And with Rob Billy and the Hustle Standard, like, <clears throat> I still, I get revenue checks that are crazy every single month. Like, it's, it's still showing up. I haven't come out with an album in that band with, for seven years. And like, still we, st we still have uh, over a million monthly listeners, which a million monthly listeners. So like, if you go to someone's Spotify, and we're not on a label, we're self -produced. God, you have a beautiful voice. It really does. Like hearing these, I'm sorry, but just sitting in these in these headsets, listening to your voice, it it's is great. like somebody's pouring Peter Piper funny. Pina Colada juice in my ears. You no said way. I had no talent. My voice. I did is, not say that. I said no. you have no musical talent no. with an instrument. Oh, musical okay. instrument. I'm talent. sorry. I'm just taking. God, taking you are it all sensitive. In. <laughs> You're well, sensitive. Well, you said I'm Rob. like your favorite person, you and are. then you said I have no talent compared to NBA guy, Don't roller coaster of emotion, and then yeah. Man, it's a roller coaster. coaster here on our podcast. Yes. It really is. So, long story short, you're going to create really high quality songs that you're proud yeah, of. Yeah, I mean, and we're going to spend probably three days. But you know what I love about that? It's the merch drop model. It's like get everybody pumped. First day of the month, boom, drop your merch. All these guys that do it, they sell out. Milk Boys, when they do their merch drops, yeah. like there's no inventory left over. At least they, that's what they say. And yeah. I've, I've heard firsthand that they sell a shit ton because they do the drop model. So if you go to that drop model with what you're doing with the songs, you get people hyped up. So even if you do drop a song that maybe it's not a total hit, maybe it's not yeah. as popular as you thought it would be, 
it doesn't matter because all the hype around you dropping a song and the mystery of what's it going to be, especially if you guys mix up your styles a little bit, which yeah. you're capable of. And I could totally picture some cameos from Jake on the hustle standard stuff. Mm -hmm. Imagine a chorus line where he comes in like, dude, you have this melting pot of rad stuff. What I'm saying is it's a cool thing. I hope you capitalize on it in a way where it's not just like, I'm just really releasing a song. Oh yeah. 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 Like, and that's, that's the other thing too, is like, you have to come out with content. You have to, you know, all that stuff, right? right? Like if there's no attention to the song. So that's another reason we want to do one a quarter. Cause we want to do a really hype music video. We want to take our time with it because in the past we've done that. We've, we've come out with 10 tracks and there's like three tracks on the album where we're just like, yeah, they're pretty good. What's Hustle? What, uh, Hustle's, what's his first name? Charlie. Charlie yeah. Hustle? Yeah, yeah. That's his real name? Uh, his real name is Charles Carapedes. I see why he went with Hustle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like that. Um, Carapedes. Is he Greek? I, I would assume so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, the, what's his specialty? What does he do? He's an amazing producer. Yeah, you know, absolutely amazing. Uh, vocalist? Uh, yeah, he does vocals on there. He does the, uh, the like the auto tune singing and stuff. So he comes up with really good harmonies, and he, he's really talented in that. So basically, everything on the song Beast he did other than vocals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even, even with my metal stuff, right? Because I don't play the instruments. But does he play music? Yeah, he plays music. Yeah, I mean, not he's not. He wouldn't say he's a guitarist, but like he plays all the riffs and everything. But he like can that. go from strumming all the way to mixing. Yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, that's, all, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's cool. Yeah, Is yeah. he making music right now? Yeah, he's making music right now. Under Charlie Hustle? Uh, no, the Hustle standard. Hustle standard. Um, it's it's very, very mellow. Like, he's stepping pretty far out of his world to make my music. Yeah. It's not what he makes. Uh -huh. And then I'm coming from sort of like my hardcore background, like metal, and sort of coming his way and softening we, up. We can cut this part if I'm genuinely curious, though. How does Jake fit in? Uh, Jake's just another, um, another band of mine. Band. Why wouldn't you plug him in? To I don't think you, I don't think it, it's right for the project. Mm. Same thing. I don't put Jake on my metal songs, right? Jake's an amazing songwriter. Like yeah. that dude rips. He can stand there and play the guitar, but he has his. I feel genre. like you have all these ingredients. Yeah, you should try baking a cake. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. We we have a song all together. Dana's on the song. Uh, Is she really? Fuck, what's the song called? Can she, she sing? No, she raps. She uh, raps. I can see it's that. Yeah, that's awesome. It's she a hits lot. it hard. Yeah, and she actually has a pretty good verse. I'm sure if people actually look it up, they'll be like, you should come out with an album. Oh, that's amazing. But uh, yeah, all of us are on one track. She gets a royalty check at the end of every year, and it's like 1600 bucks. And she's like, what is this for? I'm like, you made a song 15 years ago, Dan. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's awesome. I'm obviously very passionate about music. I love music. I have a very eclectic taste in music. And it's frustrating that yeah. music is such a big part of my life, and I am like no part of me, no part of any part of who I was ever supposed to be has any musical talent. Until, all. until we talk Rob into letting us do our song that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we want to do, I've been wanting to produce I see what a this song. this is now. For it's a all long making time. sense now. Yeah. No, yeah. we've been talking forever about making music videos, making a song just for the hell of it. Just because I feel like I have a, a good ear for a good beat. Like I know what yeah. could be catchy and what would be a, a fairly trendy song. Um, but I just don't have any musical ability. I can't even, I can't yeah. keep a rhythm. Like I can't keep a, you, t you tell me to do a simple like rhythm and I'll, I think it's my yeah. ADD probably. I'm a little bit all over the well, place. And I think that's where I show up in music a lot. Right. So a long time ago I realized and I was like, Oh, I'm a creator. Right. Like I know how to create things. Now I don't necessarily know how to, you know, build an engine or do this or do that, but I know how to create a really fun life. I know how to create really good products. So when I step into the studio, a lot of times, like I'm just making noises with my mouth or I'm like, Ooh, we should slow this part down. Let's let, let's lose this. Let's lose this. So I come in as a producer. I don't necessarily have the skill, but I understand what makes something good. Right. That's exactly what I was. Yeah. Trying and to I say. think that's what you can do because yeah. that's what you do with your life. Yeah. Like, you know how to make an entertaining video. You're not a movie producer uh, by any means. I'm not an editor. I'm exactly, not exactly, but you know what makes an engaging right. video. I like to think that I have a, an eye, an eye for what's good. Like you, you do. Saying. Yeah. Um, and so one thing that I do feel like I, I, I could do is play the harmonica. That's mm, one. My dad does, was actually, does play pretty good harmonica. my dad was actually really good at the harmonica. Oddly okay. enough, my dad used to, when my dad was sick, he had a brain tumor. Um, and when they were trying to make ends meet, uh, this was like during, when I was like ages two to no, basically from when I was born to, till I turned nine like pretty poor years of my life. Like our family was struggling to make ends meet. And my dad, I found out later on in life that he used to go down to the freaking street corner and play harmonica for, oh, whoa. and panhandle. Hell yeah. Why? But he, was, he, he wasn't 
doing the homeless guy thing. He was trying to put on a show. He was like being a street entertainer, Fair like in, in, you would find in, in New York in freaking Salt Lake because that's where he lived. I love that. Yeah, it's really cool. So that's the that's harmonica. I'm, I'm connected to it because of my dad, but also it's just I actually enjoy it. And it's one thing that with a harmonica, you don't have to be able to follow any sort of rhythm. So can you play the harmonica? I, I think so. Okay, cool. So we'll write a song. I have a harmonica kit. Let's do this. Let's do this. We'll, we'll write a song for Lane and Ammo. I would love. And we'll fly you up. Or you, you fly yourself up, right? I'm acting like I need to no, fly No, no, you no, no. Where are we going with that? You fly me? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to fly yeah. me. First yeah. class accommodations? Yeah. Yeah, you'll get first All class. Right. Yeah. $700. Fair I'll enough. fly you to Whitefish. Okay. Per diem? Um, there no. Per diem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you, what did you give me? You just gave me that weird drink. I'll make you a weird drink, and then I'll give you some meat sticks you gave oh, yeah. me downstairs. Absolutely. That's a fair <laughs> trade. I mean, wait, how did we get cut out of this? We, You're not cut out. We're still fa- finding your talents. We might be in. We coach. know what my talent is. What's yeah, your talent? Yeah, I your can say Oh, dancer. dude, actually, you know what? What is his voice? Not absolutely. It's beautiful. It's an angel. Astonishingly, yeah. like yeah, I can sing. What? And he can dance. And, and he can. Dance. Da- the man has rhythm. You, you're very coordinated that way. Um, your dance moves are incredible, actually. Um, yeah, you're like a sexy black girl. I don't know why you haven't started a TikTok dance. Why have you not done a trend? I don't know. I guess I was just scared. He got scared that one time we put his daughters on there, and all the comments were like, "You're forcing your daughters to dance on TikTok." Yeah, that was a bad. Why would you force? Your, why would you do that? That's I don't know. It just ended up real bad. That was and my favorite post you ever had. <laughs> I just got destroyed. I like my two daughters had just finished a soccer game. They had a black eye and a bruise on their head, and they wanted to do a TikTok that I posted. The TikTok went viral, and everybody was like. This man is beating his children and putting them on TikTok. You must dance. On it TikTok. was insane, dude. And it went so viral. There were thousands of those comments. People sharing it, going, This man must be stopped. <laughs> and Rob was like, This is incredible. I love this. That's amazing. I watch it once a week. I'm like, Look at this. Hold on. My evil friend. It. Is it still up? Oh, it's up, but it's got to be deep. Is it on it's TikTok? Be, it was probably TikTok. a year ago. Hold yeah. on. Okay, hold on. So, can we, can we really do a song? Yeah, we can all do a song. I really, really yeah, yeah. want to do. We were in Florida last week, and Dave and I were like, you know what? We should do a song and a music video, right? We want to do a music video. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we can do that. Video. All right, yeah. let's do it. Yeah, next, uh, we'll put a gun in another Land and Amos uh, album. What what song were we thinking? Didn't we think about a song, Dave? I can't think about anything other than We've still this been waiting for TikTok the sign to come right out. Now. What are you? Is it on your TikTok? Yeah, it's on You're just mine. scrolling through TikTok. Yeah, we'll I find think, it. I, yeah, I think it'll we'll be a while. Eventually. It's, it's like, deep we'll in there. It. But it, it starts with one of my daughters dancing. And you can very clearly see that one of them has like a black eye, I think. Yeah, and they're they're nervous dancing and they glance at him every once in a while. So it looks <laughs> like it does. If I didn't know you, I'd be like, there is something off about this. I didn't even do the video. My daughters wanted to do it and asked me to post it. I'm sorry. I have to see. I think I remember seeing this. It, and yeah, it's, it's going to be a way down there, I think. about your daughters. I mean, yeah. how long ago was it? It was a lot. You're a big TikToker. So yeah, it, it's got to be a ways TikToker. down there. Don't you have someone that can do this? Who? Yeah. It can well, it's usually Hans, but Hans is not on it today. He wants to do it on the screen. What yeah. do? Where were you guys? Can Hands, stop. What, what I was, was in my house. Like? It's literally a video. How long are you thinking? Hold on. This one was from. No, nope, not no. that one. No, no, no. Why doesn't TikTok do dates? I'm just keep, trying to figure out what the date was. Okay, keep going. I'll help you find it. The running one was just barely like two months ago. So you still got a while. Wow. Yeah. Let's Look at there's this. Maddie with the that. Nope. Not no, that, that was. One. When was that? 2000. That was August 2023. It's got to be a ways back, dude. Yeah. Keep going. You'll, see, it, you'll literally see a picture of Taya. I think Taya starts it. Hold on, you're scrolling too fast, man. Bro, he's not even close. <clears throat> no, I think it's a ways down there. There's a bunch of it's, ones with you shirtless on here. Yeah, a lot of shirts. Big old God, thir- you are thirst a trap. Big TikToker. Uh, well, bro, I got four million, three million followers. You got, got them all a, from abusing your daughters. Yeah, it was just one dance. I lost all of my TikTok motivation when my account got deleted. Yeah, you did. You were doing good though. For I was a like a couple million. Yeah. Man, it it wait. You really post nope. a lot on TikTok. You have a problem. This uh, is 2022? No, nope, keep going. It was later, earlier? I, no, it's. A, I'm telling you, it's it's a while back there. I don't know how far back. I might have to go back. Then you're living wait, room wait, for wait, the fireplace? Wait, 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 wait. Go back up. Is it that one right That's there? That's a lady in a restaurant. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's not that lady. Nope. That's not your daughter. What, I think it was, what do you have now? You have 15 daughters, right? No, I don't know, like 100. <laughs> so you have 100 daughters. I think you only, you probably had half the amount of daughters at the time. 
My phone just said I'm done looking. Yeah, yeah. your phone's like I can't. If if you guys can find it, that'd be great. Just send it to Dave. That's hilarious. I didn't know that. Oh, dude, that it was huge. You it should repost huge. it. Maybe I will repost yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's worth repost. We'll see how well people react to the repost. Have you ever seen those pages, like uh, somebody who kind of like a one hit wonder, somebody who went yeah. the um, what's his name, the cranberry juice guy? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. When it, uh, not just him, but people like him when they have a hit, and. It's just kind of the only thing they post, so and they, they find reasons to post it over. Like, I can't believe this was a month ago, or yeah. somebody reminded me of the store today. <laughs> Check this out, and yeah. he just posts the same thing over same and over thing. and over. Really try to run it. It's kind of a one yeah. trick pony thing. So I'm glad that neither of you are one trick ponies. No, yeah, no, but I do have one hit. It's my daughter's dancing, thinking that I. That's what made hit. you, bro. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Have you? Uh, what are you more active on right now? Instagram. Yeah, always Instagram. That's what you look at more? Yeah. Like and the one views. I post, too. Yeah. You, Rob? Yeah. Wait, you're Instagram most active on YouTube. You're a YouTuber, bro. YouTube now. You know well, that, uh, right? Yeah, you're definitely active on YouTube. Yeah, I'm just trying more. to figure out what I what I spend a lot of time on. I you like, don't scroll look, look at your screen YouTube, time, though. I, with my kids, I do. So my, me and my kids do this thing every night where if they get ready for bed on time, like quickly, and get in bed. Then I'll lay down with them and watch some YouTube videos. Yeah. We like to watch Mr. Beast a lot. Like, mm. we, I've unfortunately ran out of Mr. Beast videos to watch. But I have this thing that I can't watch a video if it's more than, like, two years old. Yeah. Because it just feels so irrelevant. Yeah. Even if it's not a current event topic, I just don't like seeing people to, like, I, I, like, I like to see how I much he's grown. So, uh, we watch a ton of YouTube, actually. And uh, Mr. Beast videos have, I understand why he's so popular. Why? Because he makes a video specifically for you. It's not for him. It's not for anybody else. He's making the video literally for the viewer. Like, everything he does is for the viewer. Yeah. Everything. Everything he does is for the viewer experience and to improve it. So yeah. We actually talked about this today. Customer journey. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we ripped on that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's fascinating to watch. So, not only is it great entertainment for us and it's stuff that my kids actually enjoy watching. Um, it's so funny, dude. My kids don't want to watch videos of me anymore, right? They they, they do when I'm not with them. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll the YouTube history, and they'll tell me about all the videos. Like, they're fans. But when I go to watch a video with them, when it's me and them, they don't want to watch no. it. And then I'll get a, a DM from somebody uh, the other day. This this lady took a picture of her husband and little boy. All he wanted to do was watch videos of Heavy D. <laughs> it's like, you guys don't even want to. I'm sitting here right next to you. <laughs> they don't care. It's just one of those things where uh, you don't realize that fame really isn't anything no it means nothing it means literally nothing um it's it's what you do with your fame it's who you know and who you meet along the way and i'm starting to learn that more and more the older i get you guys know that i hate i just hate relationships with too many people i, I don't just it's period. not that i hate i just i hate to socialize with people that i that i'm not going to have any further involvement with that's something that I've always kind of felt. I've yeah. kind of avoid like talking to strangers. Whereas my dad was the exact opposite. My dad would talk to, it was frustrating. He worse than Dave. Worse no. Than, Cause my, no, dude, my dad, mm. my dad, my dad, keep in mind, he went through a lot, it, you know, beat cancer's ass, but he's still a pretty colorful guy. We would, we went to New York. Um, he welcomed every single person who wasn't white to America. <laughs> Doesn't matter he, like, I remember getting in a cab and, like, a Pakistani guy. My dad's like, hey, how are you? Welcome to America, first thing he says <laughs> to this guy, right? And we're just like, shit, shit. And this guy's like, I have been here for 37 years. <laughs> and, like, every conversation, dude, he literally didn't never matter. stopped. So I didn't get that. I didn't get that personality trait of being able to just want to talk to people. But I'm finding that as I'm getting older and maturing, I'm starting to get it a little bit. Like I'm starting to just be genuinely curious about people enough to be able to want to like talk to them and like spend the way I view my life and the way I view literally every action I take is just a, like a battery on your phone. Right. I view it in a percentage and I've had to do this because there'd be days where I'd get home and just feel like shit. And I didn't know why I didn't know why. So I had to basically create this little visual aid in my head of this battery and uh, what is draining the battery and what charges it and, and what's kind of just a, at the end of the day, it's a great thing to look back on and say, all right, what charged me, what drained me and what needs to drain me and what, 
what is an unnecessary dream? What tabs can I close out that are just not serving me anymore? And dude, it's, it's helped me a ton. And so I'm starting to find this interest in talking to more people um, and being okay, like just not feeling like the conversation has to go anywhere. Do you ever get that feeling? Like when you talk to a stranger, I feel like you're not like this because you and Dave. It, no, are, he's definitely. You don't we just know have, who it's the funny fuck that, I am, bro. Yeah, yeah, you're just, it's funny you're bringing this up because we had this conversation. Actually, you know today. what? I've never seen you interact with strangers. I do not talk to people. Dude, hold on, because you know. So <laughs> Actually, this you know whole, what? Sorry, hold on. This whole podcast. You know how we met Rob, right? How? Oh, oh yeah. We, we, we story. went on a flight with this guy. Literally, yeah. before we before we knew who each other was, and I'm, you were literally in the seat one up from me across the aisle, and I could see you. You were just looking <laughs> sexy. You had this wild yeah. outfit on, Red these flannel. high tops. And all I remember thinking Skinny was, jeans? Damn, I wish I was that confident. Like that guy. But, but I wasn't talking to anybody. You wanted nothing to do with anybody on that plane. Though? How was the conversation, remember? W- the, the start of the conversation? Yeah. I hated it. The one by the bathroom. I, fu- no, I talked I. to you first. You didn't uh, talk to me. No, I talked to him. I know, but we yeah. never talked at all, right? Um, Not on that flight, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I talked to you twice. Yeah. But I, I approached him, and we were we were really good friends. Yeah. But like, and I, I knew who he was, and I just, I was like, oh, f- I gotta like introduce myself. And it was the worst because I was like, "It was the best." What do I can say? I don't, I don't want to talk to somebody. And I opened. I was like, "Hey, I'm friends with Keaton." And you were you right by the bathroom, which is you're so nice. Found it. Ooh, let's just watch this. I don't want to derail this because I want. Can we go back to this for a second? Because this whole podcast is about a checklist that we give to people. Yeah. The reason why this is important because we just had this conversation today. You should take inventory of the things that build your battery and the things that deplete That's your I battery. Go back to that, and and you should be very very careful about how you let your battery run yeah. out because and Dave's the perfect example of this. Once your battery runs out, you're a real shit bag, mm-hmm. and you don't you're the worst. And you're not good to people. You're not good to your family. You're you're not good at all. Yeah. And until you learn that you have energy and that that energy goes up and down depending on who you're with. Yep. Mm-hmm. You end up with a dead battery ho- most of the day, and then you get into a place where you're like, dude, I was a shitbag all week, and I realized it was because my energy was so low. I never charged up. Exactly. And the thing that we talked about today was you should take inventory of the people in your life that do charge your battery because you should spend more time charging your battery. I think one of the checklist items, and we even gave it today. It's funny we're having this conversation. You should figure out what charges your battery and integrate that into every aspect you can. Mm-hmm. Otherwise you're a Tesla dead on the road because you didn't plug in and charge your battery. 100%. Yeah. So I picture the, um, cause I didn't really play video games. I stopped playing at the initial mortal Kombat, but I've always pictured the mortal Kombat bar. Yeah, your life bar. Yeah. That's my life bar, bro. Yes. And it's like, I get beat up and I have to recharge it and I get beat up cause a battery, like you recharge it by plugging in. But I feel like that life bar, you can recharge it other ways. Right? Yeah. I just, I mean, Exactly. However you visualize it, it's the exact same thing. I visualize literally me having an, an iPhone cord, being able to plug it into a person, to a fruit, to a yeah. this, to a that, whatever. Because um, in your brain, there's no rules, right? Plug you, it into a fruit? Just he imagine. Likes, imagine. I don't, have to, I don't have to see the exact connection. I just... Yeah, but I pictured that. Like, I pictured a pear yeah. and you plugging an iPhone into and guess it, what? and it, it doesn't make sense to me. It fueled me up. That was a lemon. See, you're a different thinker than I. Okay, so your life bar, right, floating in the sky. Yeah. Ah, she's, oh, she's, see, I, she's, I can see myself eating yeah, a pear. She, and she's like, dipping, Broo. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes, I got <laughs> okay. it now. There yeah, just my brain works. So yeah. what do you think the checklist item needs to be for that? Create a, a visual aid, an actual visual aid in your head um, or something that you could actually put on. It'd be better if I need to do this, actually. I need to create a, a, a physical version of this. Uh, daily and life battery. So you need to create, you need to have one for the day yep. and one for your life. Essentially it's the same battery. Yeah. Um, but the reason why you need to separate it is because those little micro events and micro relationships that you have throughout the day, bro, those take a toll. Those yeah. are, those have a much more profound effect on you than you realize, at least for me anyway, somebody who gets real bad social fatigue, I, you probably feel the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, I had no idea that you were, that introverted. Yes. It's funny, bro. Because once once you, you I like get to you know you. I thought that I was like him. I'm dude, nothing ba- like you. I think that's you not true at all. <laughs> that's not true hair. at no, all. You're literally him around. in this bubble. You're just stuck in this shell. Get out of the bubble. A hard candy I shell. Get I like my hard candy shell. Yeah, Where but your hard candy shell so go? sweet on this. You no, just came out. Dave has just a dollop of nougat. 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 I want to say like that. He's the only person I know that can draw energy from anybody. Bro, they give me oh, energy. Yeah. That's what charges my battery. One of the only people I've ever met. 
uh, and I think that's cool as shit. Okay, but that's that, the thing is you have to realize. I love the way you said that. You're actually drawing energy. You're when you're with somebody. There's energy that's being exchanged, whether yeah. you like it or not, whether you know it or not. Does that mean people are exhausted after they talk to me? Sometimes. stole their Sometimes. energy? No, I feel like it takes, for example, the flight where the lady, you know, oh, yeah. cried on your shoulder the whole time, a 45-minute flight. Yeah. It's I bet at the end of that, she felt wonderful. a huge load off. Because who knows? Who knows if you had nobody to talk to about that? Like, And you true. felt good. I did feel good. You'd, well, he yeah. didn't even feel it was just like another thing for him. Yeah, but just, everything he does is charging his battery. Right. I mean, very not, not true. Socially, everything charges his battery. He uh, has yeah. he yeah, has yeah. lots of things that drain him. Like, like what? Checking emails. I mean, this, that, what drains yeah, you? Check emails. Just, I've never you've never checked an email. <laughs> exactly. In your whole life. Because his battery, <laughs> okay. it, it, dude, it'll okay, go from a hundred to I'm zero. I'm genuinely in one email. interested. What drains your battery? I don't know. I don't either. I've known you for a long ass time. I don't know anything that Nothing. drains your battery. I've, I've never seen because you're tired. looking at three people right now who have batteries really big that go really fast, and as soon as they're gone, it's like you do not want to be around. Those I think people. not having fun and not uh, engaging with people. I can see that takes my battery. I can see like that. Being, uh, like, yeah, you know, maybe what, being you know alone. what I feel like. Yeah, being alone. That's I don't know if that's uh, a good one. So you feel it's, off it's people. Not, I mean, I can I can keep my battery when I'm alone, but also like if I'm not engaging with people. That's and true. I, do you yeah. remember him during? Dave went through some dark days, as we all do, uh, before he met Des. Yeah, mm. I remember walking in and, and and seeing him just kind of passed out on a couch at the shop, and now I think yeah, there's a beer bottle in your hand or, or laying by you, and that's when I was like, oh man, yes. Yeah, there might be something going on here. I had no idea. Yeah. I just thought that he was just, but you were self-isolating, right? Yeah. You were, you were. Had a nice hammock, just hung up in a dark room. Right. Yeah. Mm. But those were, those were dark days. I lo- yeah. For but you. the guys in the shop were the guys I'd hang out with and that, that charged my battery. But it was when everybody went home and I was by yourself. That's yeah. crazy to think. And then along comes Dez and this dude just perked right up. He's a, he's a hundred percent. flower all the in the time. desert. Yeah. All the time. You can wake Dave up at three in the morning. He's at one hundred percent battery. That's true. He does. You do Trust have. Me, my baby does that every night. This is a really <laughs> good checklist item, though, because if people are looking to see why they have bad weeks, bad months, bad years, it's because your battery's running low and you're not doing something to energize it. Because if you look at well, even Dave and Rob, you guys are both phenomenal when you're at one hundred percent, and yeah. you're both real shit bags when you're at zero. When have I been a shit bag? Well, not to me, bro. Oh, you're but the, I you're. Have, a, I have seen you King be a shit, shit bag, bag before. I'm you a are shit King, bag? Dude, I have seen you. When? Be. I don't know. I got to let me go through my See? memories. You're, th- you're saying it so confident. I've, never, I've never seen you be a shit bag. Yeah, I'm not a shit bag. I'm yeah. a fantastic. These are all great. I'm a ten. When I hear bad things about you, it's They're lying. so appalling <laughs> to me because I'm like, Rob doesn't have me and my wife both like. We'll hear something like about Rob. Like, no, Why Rob doesn't have a bad stuff. Wait, when do you hear? Oh, there's there's some stuff going on. There's this, 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 there's a thing group chat. <laughs> there's a group chat called "Bad Stuff About Rob." What the? F- <laughs> Can you send there it is to now. me? Listen, hold on, time you out. Send it to me. You're, <laughs> what is going on? Get, you're telling me you're always a hundred? No, okay. but I'm not a shit bag. <laughs> well, what do you call it when you're at like two percent? I just you're I'm sleepy. You're very irritable. I'm irritable. I took a nap today, guys. He did take a nap today. That energized That's it. sick. Hold on. But, <laughs> Let's talk about naps for a second because talk about the freaking danger zone. When you start messing around with midday naps. Oh, I, don't, I don't touch bro, that. I, bro, I do two a year, okay? No, 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 no. I'm saying midday naps are great. Like it's mm-hmm. a, You had a great nap today. Yeah, but why is it the danger zone? Well, because Hold it's, on. I'll get to it. You grab my backpack. I can tell you why. Or do you have all your own? You, you can be like this guy who takes a nap on Sunday afternoon and wakes up Mon- <laughs> Monday evening. Well, that's not a nap. That's, <laughs> that's a full-blown a, sleep. That's a hibernation. Yeah. Uh, no, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. There's a danger zone with yeah. naps. If you go beyond the 90-minute... Dude, if you go beyond the... For me, personally, if I go beyond the 45-minute mark yeah. on a midday nap, I'm toast. Dude, one of the first times I took a real nap, Dave thought I was dying. We went to Lake Powell, and oh, he I was driving the boat. You remember this? And you were driving the boat, and I had been asleep for like three hours. Yeah. And Dave was like, somebody Just needs to go check on us. Keaton. Like, he might be You getting, were on the boat with us or in your on, houseboat? In the houseboat. Oh, we were, yeah, we were yeah, driving yeah. the houseboat. The back room on and the I, he was like, somebody needs to go check but, on Keaton. Yeah, I but think he's getting asphyxiated. He's been asleep for asphyxiated. so long. Asphyxiated. Asphyxiated. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's because like a it's a danger thing, right? zone. What? Asphyxiation is like a sex thing. Asphyxiation? No, that's where exhaust from the motor. Can't breathe. 
gets uh, into your lungs. Uh, I you Google different it. things. Asphyxiation is is just yeah. lack of oxygen. I think. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about right before that? You naps. naps. Danger of naps. The naps. naps. That's okay. So, uh, dude, listen. There's no for anybody listening. There's no shame in taking a midday nap. Uh-uh. Some of us need it. Some of our bodies absolutely need that quick little reset. And guess what? There's a lot of people out there that aren't taking naps that should try. Yeah. Because just like a one, don't try not to take a nap after like 3 p.m. Because that's when you get into the weird evening zone. Yeah. But if you can take a nap between 1 and 3 p.m. And you take it between 15 and 45 minutes, I think you'll see a substantial increase in everything. Yeah, your battery. You plug into your pair. You plug it right into the pair, dude. Yeah. Or you throw yeah. that pair in the sky and it hits your fruit bar somehow. Yeah. Fruit or your bar. life bar. <laughs> your life bar. So, no, but dude, that's, I love, I like, I'm actually going to make this checklist item. I want to hark on a little bit more because there's a lot of science behind napping. There's a lot of science behind being able to, to shut down during the day and, and, and reset. But with that said, there's a dark side to napping too, which where if you go beyond that, it's, it's really interesting. If you have a sleep tracker or a, ring or whatever it is my mattress tells me how much deep sleep and REM sleep I get um if you get into the deep sleep um phase of, of sleep during a nap yeah bro there's no crawling out of it and it being the same day for you yeah it was you were almost there today and yeah, you have to I, deal with the rest of the day yeah but I took a couple of zins and some energy drinks <laughs> and I was ready to he rock. was ready to <laughs> rip yeah. the difference is you're out of town and you don't have a ton of responsibility right now I think that's a that's. I played two shows today. That's, I think <laughs> you're good. Like he ripped at the shows, then he came home, had a nap. This is what I'm saying. You can take a nap and not wake up. You could have taken a two hour nap, three hour nap, probably, and been okay because you're not having to go back and tend to a family and figure out, you know, yeah. what part of your day you missed. You already did your day, so at the end of the day, you're just exhausted. I think there's a difference. But what time did you take a nap? One to three. No, two two to four. Oh, two to four. Let's two talk four. about it. how did it feel. I felt great. He would let he was he was so deep in asleep. He thought that he was awake, but he realized it was a dream. I was dreaming of not not being able to sleep, and then my alarm went off, and I was like, "Wait, I was asleep the whole time." It was crazy. So, oh, did you terrible. not feel rested? Yeah, that doesn't uh, sound until good. You wake no, up. I felt great. His his house is a castle on the hill, and everything's there. It's really really nice. Yeah, but that's a. Have you ever noticed that if you have a laboring dream? Where, like, oh yeah, you wake up and you're like, I feel like worst I didn't get dreams to sleep. of my life weren't nightmares. They were when I was a missionary and I would go to sleep and I would close my eyes and fall asleep and finally get a break from being a missionary. And then I would start doing missionary work. Missionary is like a sexual thing, right? Uh, no, as also, a servant of the Lord. Servant of the Lord. Same oh, thing. Completely different. <laughs> no, when we served our LDS missions, right? Uh, uh, yeah. You go out and you proselyte all day long. You're up at seven. Knock doors. You're having a couple of meetings with your companion and then you're boom, hitting the streets. Boom, boom, boom. Like literally approach oh, talking dang. to your nightmare, my nightmare. Yeah. Every s- single stranger, anybody you see, you're talking to them. That's yeah. why you don't like to do it anymore. And you're talking to them about religion. That was so hard. you go, no, it was amazing time. Best times of my life. But when you go to sleep and you have to, and you start doing missionary work again all night long. Oh, do you guys wow. not have these dreams when you oh, were missionary? Yeah, I did. It was like a very common thing. I had in my dreams mission. about knocking on doors. You wake over up and over. just so miserable. Yeah. And like, those were the days where you're like, I want to go home. Yeah. This sucks. Yeah. I only had a couple of those days. But then you just think about Jesus and you're good, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. So what did you know? Did you have you heard? I just I, I know what people say about Jesus. Good tidings of, what is it? He's, great joy. he's broken Have all you heard the good tidings me. of he, peace and joy? Is that a song? Good uh, tidings of great joy. It's the gospel, bro. Oh, yeah, that's right. Are you going to sing it? No. I, Rob, do you believe, we, Rob, do you believe in Jesus? Uh, oh, this is a great question. <sighs> Before I forget, I'm going to add a checklist item for naps. Naps. Do I believe in Jesus? I question man a lot. So scriptures, things written, I understand marketing so fucking well. I understand trying to sell something. I understand manipulating people because I've been very guilty of it myself. That I find it hard to believe that a story's lasted that long and it's had so much power attached to it. That it wasn't embellished? That it wasn't either embellished or used for manipulation. And yeah. that, that makes me wary. Now, um, all the times, and I, I told the story today, yeah. right? I almost drowned in um, I almost drowned in Boca Boca Lake or the whatever the f*** it's called, right? Where where we just oh, were. Boca Inlet. Yeah. Where yeah, we yeah. just I were. Must, I, I, you know, you know I how the water to, comes yeah. really shit? Tell the story. I came to terms with death there. I um, So we parked on the sandbar at night. I was very, very drunk. 
and I got out to stand on the sandbar, and it was about five feet. And then the boat broke loose and started going away. So my boy that was attached to the boat parked the boat but didn't know we were in the water, so he left us. So I swam away from the sandbar. And it's funny because, like, there, there's something there, right? And I, like, completely ignored it because whatever. Um, but I started to swim towards the boat. And I'm not a str- strong swimmer, and it was a big current. And then I was like, I can't make it. So I turned back around, then I couldn't find the sandbar again. <sighs> So I swam for about 50 yards, which I'm not capable of. And I came to terms with dying. I came to terms with drowning. And I was like, man, this fucking sucks. It was dark? Yeah, it was pitch dark. Night. Yeah, it was, uh, it was 1.15 in the morning. And that matters because there's an interesting part. And uh, Aaron was behind me. He was screaming. And then he stopped screaming. And I was like, cool, he died. Um, and I kept swimming towards the boat and then came to terms with dying. I was like, this is my last stroke. I would go under. I'd come back up. And I'd be like, all right, one more stroke. And I did that. And yeah, I was screaming for Jesus. Like I was out loud, like, a fu- I mean, until I s- couldn't breathe anymore. Right. And I was screaming like, please God, no. Right. Um, and mostly because I was so worried about Aaron cause he has three kids. I don't have kids. So I got, you know, nothing to live for, but I was like really bummed out that my boy was not going to make it. And then I wasn't going to make it. And that's how I was going to die. Like the boringest death ever, not being able to swim to a boat, but anyway, screaming for Jesus. And somehow I fucking made it like still to this day, when I really look back at the story, I'm like, what, how did I like, I have no f-ing clue how I got to that boat. Because I was at terms with dying, and I was, like, 25 yards away. And I was taking on water, and I was like, oh, I'm just not going to make it. So I eventually made it, and uh, wow. we went back. We got Aaron out of the water. Aaron had drank a lot of f-ing water. So we got out of the water around 1.30, and we were driving back to his house. And uh, the crazy part is, and this is where, like, do I believe in Jesus? I, I'll just say yes, right? But I definitely believe in something, because he, so I checked my phone on the way back, and at one twenty six, Dana didn't know I was out. She thought I went to bed at nine o'clock. We went out at midnight. She texted me at one twenty six in the morning. Was like, please, uh, just let me know you're okay. I know you're sleeping, but I just had a dream you drowned. What? And she was in Montana. Wow. I was in Florida. And I, the, it, the, just like the craziest shit. And I think there's, I've seen too many crazy things like that to realize there's not a higher power. I just I have a really hard time, like committing to religion. And, and something that man's been involved with. So, like, I've seen it on my own. I know it exists. But when I look at books and stories and shit that f-ing people are involved with, and knowing that, like, in my darkest times of me being a shitbag, like, I've manipulated the fuck out of people. And it's not hard, right? And I, I can only be, imagine if I was in charge of, you know, rewriting the Bible to make it a little more palatable for a newer generation that I wouldn't change things to fit myself. So I have a hard time with organized religion. I love it. When I go to church, I always think to myself, like, I should go here every week. This was really good. It feels good. It charges my battery. But I have a hard time, you know, uh, just taking taking it at face value because I, I feel like it's been manipulated for a long time. That was a great answer. Thanks, man. It was a great I think answer. about it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you think about it a lot. I think about it a lot, yeah. Because it, it's it it is like when you see people that are really religious, they're the best people, dude. They're the best f- people. There's obviously Eve. Yeah, uh, there's well, Eve. ones that really believe it and integrate it. It's yeah. the ones who claim they believe it and don't integrate it, or the ones that you're like. Yeah. It's the people who believe that. in God that are the real great people. It's the people who believe in religion that you got to be. Careful yeah, exactly. With. And that's that's what I'm wary of. Yeah. So yeah, I do think about it a lot, right? Because you know, spirituality is a big thing like there's too many things in my life that like just line up and are weird and it's like it's not some of it's based on me working hard like I'll check that but like something like making it to the boat or different things or certain people I meet or it's just like man this is too weird like it's too fucking weird to just you know say like oh this is coincidence like I have that many coincidences in my life that are that fucking rad so there's do you ever, something there. do you ever uh, ponder the afterlife no Never think never. about it. Never. You don't ever think about life after death? No. I think we just go away. Because, like, you know those nights where you go to sleep and you just wake up the next day and you were just gone when you slept? I think that's what happens. You think so? I think so. Change my mind if you want, bro. You I'm open. In, you believe in energy, right? Yeah. What is energy to you? Oh, my God. Energy is the ability to move something. It's I, I believe in souls, but I, I don't... If I, you had to describe energy, what would it look like? It's a, it's a force, right? It's a force that's how capable does it of move moving around, How something. does it move around? It can be transferred. Yeah. Yeah. Does how, it ever, where does it come from? 
Where does it come from? Can you create energy? I think you can transfer energy. Where does it come from, though? I think it exists. I think it's it. I mean, there's chem. There's there's obviously like the magic side to it, but then there's like how do I how does a fire start? Right, like so fire energy, energy always has been. Is would you agree with yeah, that? Yeah, energy, yeah. It's, al- I, it's always been. Yeah. A thing. Yes. Where did it come from? Well, it had to start somewhere, right? Right. Okay. So yeah. that's that's a good that's a yeah a point to remember for a second as you move along this timeline of life, your energy, right? Mm-hmm. Basically, our bodies are just meat suits. Yeah. with energy wiggling through them all the time. That's essentially what we are. Yeah. We can't see the energy. We, we don't know what it is. I like to view energy as kind of a frequency because everything's a frequency. Yes. You know colors are frequencies? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. This is something I learned not too long ago. That's was, why was, colorblind was, people can't see colors because yeah. the frequency's off. I was looking at a sunset, and I, I turned to my friend, uh, Jason Clark, actually, and I was like, dude, it was like a very profound moment. I'm like, why can I see that color? Why is this so beautiful to my eyes? Like, what is happening? Um, and then he's like, dude, they're frequencies and they're yeah. just, you know, it's the frequency of music. It's just a frequency, just a, a vibration going through the ear, through the air. And the way it hits your ear, your ear likes that frequency though. Yeah. It likes the way that it, so there's this energy that's moving around all the time. You're using it, you're transferring it, you're gaining it from mm-hmm. other people. When you die, mm-hmm. there's an energy inside you, right? Yeah. I agree that your body just goes away, just basically goes back to the earth. Yes. How your energy just runs into a wall. I, I think somebody I think, puts it in a bottle. I think everything shuts off. and I think it doesn't work anymore. But if it always has been, how would that be? How could you just stop something that always yeah, has but been? I don't, has it always been right? I mean, we go back to, to inception. Of you said at some child. point somebody created it or something happened. Mm-hmm. It came from somewhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, what's the, was it Newton's, whatever the law of motion is? Mm-hmm. Um, For every action, an, an, opposite op- an object reaction. in motion will remain in motion oh. until acted upon by an, e- by an equal or greater force. Yeah. So that's energy and it's moving. It's, yep. it's, it's traversing time. And you think it just stops? Yeah. How? Why? I think the, ant- the energy transfers to something else. I think that the, the, the so energy. So you don't think right. that you actually are the energy. You just think you have it. Yeah, I think there's a consciousness to a body, but I think that consciousness goes away, right? Like I, th- I think, I think the same thing, and, and I just don't see that. I see it transferring back to the earth, right? Like whether it's your body going back to the earth or whatever. So, I would say energy, like fire, always comes to me as energy, right? You feel heat; it does all these different things, and then a fire eventually burns out and it stops. And yes, that heat transfers into the air, and then it gets dissipated and goes away. And what's your heritage? I don't know. I've, never, don't, I've never really been. No, a, no, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm an American. <laughs> you ne- so you don't know anything about your ancestors, really? Not really, no. Uh, there's there's a lot of uh, adopted and things like that in, in in my history. Bro, you could learn a lot about who you are, why you are the way that you are, and what could how how to do better and how to be the better version of you, the best version of you. Yeah. By just figuring out where you came from. This is a, that's a total sidebar from the from the God conversation. Um, but I just find you're a person that's very optimistic. You like to create. You like to build. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be a, even if it's, even if you're wrong, wouldn't it be a better story? Wouldn't it be a, a more, wouldn't, well, wouldn't the, it be a more fun? I, I, yeah, I love that, right? Like I love the, you can do anything outlook. And that's something that I see in, in my mom with, with Jesus, right? Like my mom can be in the craziest situation and she's one of the, like the Jesus take the wheel thing. And it's always <laughs> like, you're just, but like that. And that's the one thing I love about religion, right? It gives people so much hope. I, that, think, like, I think you're afraid to, afraid to face it. I think you're to afraid. face what? The afterlife. I just don't think about it. <laughs> I just always thought that, like, when I die, it just goes off. Right, but out of sight, out of mind. Is but I'm also okay with that, right? Like, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not scared of that. It's just, I'm fine with that ending. Okay, so let's play a what if. What if there's an afterlife? That'd be sick. What would it look like? Oh, my God. This is a big, a fucking heavy. I just want to watch the video of him beating his kids and making them dance on TikTook. <laughs> and now we're talking about, We're getting like, to it, dude. What if We're afterlife. getting to it. Right. What did you think the podcast wasn't going to be deep? Um, yeah, I mean, fucking afterlife. What would it look like? I mean, I, the one I've always been taught is like the fluffy clouds, and all my boys are there, and like I guess I see all my pets and everything that I've lost, mm-hmm. and like my 
all my people and it just seems like a lot of people that's i think logistically it just seems like a lot of everyone that's ever died <laughs> is there holy fuck. yeah right and then what you just live forever up there or i like to view it as a place where you have full control over energy around you you can move it you can tw- you can shift it you can create with it yeah but because isn't that here yeah, in, I in think a it's way, but we, we're, we're working with what they say, like eight percent capacity of our brains, right? Maybe like you are. No, like they say they say that we use like eight to ten percent of, of yeah. the capacity. They say a lot of the access. Yeah, they say a lot of things. Yeah. Well, there's people that exactly. So there's more up there. To, of than, course, than what we're talking yeah. about. So I I don't believe that in this earthly plane, we're able to access enough of that consciousness to be able to see the energy and move it and shape it and, and do whatever. I believe that. I mean, it. Dana sending me the text at one twenty six in the morning when I was in the water yeah. and drowning. That's like, what was that? Like, how did she get that? Would it give you more hope if there, if, you, if there was an afterlife that you believed in? Would it change anything that you do I don't now? think so. I don't think so. Because I generally want to be a good person, yeah. right? I think, like, we all know that I suck here and there, but I, I generally want to be a good person. I think I'm yeah. a really good person. So I think in the context of living my life, like, I'm already living my life to try to be rad. Like, I'm making the most of it. I'm making myself proud. I'm making other people proud. I'm trying to do good by people. And, you, I mean, you know that. You yeah. know that, like, I, I mean, people call me an enabler. That I've been called that like a mother recently it's because i like i do way too much for people yeah right and it allows people to be shit bags and like that's apparently a bad thing but i just look at it as like yeah i'm just trying to help people man help people out you know i try to create good things i don't i'm not trying to rip anybody off like so if there is an afterlife i'm sure i'll end up on the the, the top side <laughs> of it but like it's also not something that i'm i'm thinking about day to day and i'm using as like well that's where I, like because I think there's people like that, right? There's people like that that are like, well, I'm living so I can get to the afterlife. And right. it's like, no, I'm living to maximize this life, yeah. right? Like, if it happens, I'll get there and that'll be rad. But it's also, it's not something I need to look at, yeah. you know? I like it. It's a, it's a fair way to look at it and it's a healthy way, I think. Um, I do think as we grow and we age, we just, like, I'm finding that I'm accessing parts of my brain that I didn't think I could before because I'm, I'm finally slowing down enough to be able to, to realize it. You're slowing down a little bit. Okay. Interesting. But only not like not, I'm slowing down in, in all the good ways. I'm slowing down the things that were always just going way too fast. And yeah. I was just this racetrack in my brain. Like dude, at any given time I could be, I could probably have six to seven racetracks going in my brain mm-hmm. while I'm doing you know, different things. And then in front of that, I've got, I've got a couple of, you know, merry-go-rounds and then I've got what I'm actually doing. There's a lot going on up there and I'm able to compartmentalize it and move it around for the most part. But it it is frustrating because, um, (laughs) you just find, it goes back to the battery thing. You just find all these different things that are running that just don't need to to be running. And you, as you start closing those things out, you start slowing down because you start or feels like you're slowing down because you have more bandwidth. Yeah. I think that's what it comes down. That's what I'm doing right now. Right. Cause I'm not slowing down physically I, as far as I'm, I'm on the gas harder than ever. So are you Same. I'm watching yeah. you. You're killing I'm it. I'm a, I'm a full blown lunatic. And I think that like the wildness of me and the unpredictability and all those, like there is a like deleterious qualities that I have that make me a full blown creative maniac. Um, that's one of the things I'm doing right now is like, as I age, I'm like, I have to get better than this. This actually leads me to right? the next question. Does legacy matter to you? Uh, no, because I mean, I don't, I, the, the weird thing is dude, it's, you know, and this is a weird thing for me, but I don't have kids, right? Like my brother has kids. So like but I, deep down you want kids. I, 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 you're not opposed to kids. I'm not opposed to kids right. at all. I, no, I know. I know I'm you, I'm not opposed to kids. You'd, you'd make a great dad. You'd be Thank a you. kick ass dad. Thank you. Um, Kids are probably, as far as children of your own, out of the question now? Uh, I don't know. I'm sure a doctor could make it happen. <laughs> are you guys pushing that? Or is that, is that something you would want to push mm, and like, that, figure that's out? A, that would be a conversation. That would that like, change the have. legacy question, though? That would change the legacy question, right? Because, I mean, even like what I said about Aaron, like... Because you'd want it to live on in your kids. Faced with death, like, and I made the joke of, like, well, you know, I don't really have much to live for. Like, yeah. I think that's one of the reasons I don't, you know, whatever, right? I'm just here f-ing ripping on life. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, legacy's so weird, right? Like, it almost feels selfish to an extent mm-hmm. for me. 
Because if I want to leave a legacy, it's like, well, I want people to talk about me after I go. I want to be remembered for all these different things. And like, yeah, I want to do great things. But I think, I think the true legacy thing, and I think that if I cared about that, it would be like, well, I want like, I want to leave an impression on kids. I want to leave an impression on like the next generation of, you know, the example that I've set. So I like that. I I mean, I think the, a, a bunch of my things, when we say compartmentalizing, I've put as byproducts of things. So like, yeah, if I lead a really rad life, like, yeah, I'm going to have a legacy. Yeah. But it's not something that I'm focused on. And I think the same thing with like, uh, with the afterlife. I'm like, yeah, if I do this life right and there is an afterlife, I'll show up there rad. Yeah. But it's not, it's not what I'm focused on. Right. It's just, if I, if I do my life right, these things will just happen. It's an interesting way to look at it. I think that's a, probably a more rare perspective that a, you know, out there. Um, but it's a healthy one. It's not your, a lot of people don't believe in the afterlife or angry at it. Have you noticed that they're, they're, yeah. they're angry, they're passionate yeah. about it, but really behind the passion is there's sometimes a lot of anger or sadness or fear or whatever it is. Um, driving people to be atheist or, or they feel like that's why they have their belief. But those are, those are the ones where I would challenge those people to just maybe, and it's really hard to do. Go to the other side of the table and view it. Just maybe, just give it a what if. Yeah. Just look at the what if and and say what if there was a God. Yeah. Open your open your mind to it and 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 try the process. Yeah. If there's a God up there, it's and pretty easy to connect. That's to all. It, right? That's all self development, right? And yeah. that's why coach. That's why Keaton's crushing right now. That's why coaches are popular because self development's so important, right? And I think half of that is taking ownership, like. And I think one of the reasons that I feel so healthy mentally is like, I take ownership over everything. Yeah. Right. So like, I think when people are mad at something or they're mad at Jesus, cause they feel slighted because they're not mm-hmm. taking ownership of what's going wrong in their life. I like it. They're not taking ownership of it. It doesn't feel like their ride. Like yeah. I'm on my f-ing ride. I'm here because I want to be here. I'm with you guys because I want to be here. And we all feel that that's the best part. Yeah. We yeah. all feel that that's why your relationships you're an enabler so because great. Rob's just the guy who gets things going. Yeah, bro, like, it's my when you're fucking around, ride. It's always a you party. want to be on my ride? Like we can share rides. I'll ride on your ride. Every the once first in a while. and only time I yeah. ever actually danced at like a public space and actually was like trying and enjoying it was with you. It was at the <laughs> really? the the Vegas club when you went through the dance uh, wall. You did the the what? Oh, I one love of the greatest, one of the greatest memories of my life. We were at the the big what's the big club in Vegas when Marshmallow was there performing. The win. Uh, encore. When we went up on stage with Marshmallow, mm, I wasn't I there for that. Don't Mm-mm. think so. No, this is a this is during the Heavy Academy. We went and it was nobody was big was playing. We just went. It was the big club that everybody goes to down in Vegas. The okay. Encore, Encore, I think. Yeah, yeah. and is I that danced what with you. Anyways, there was a we went in and we started dancing. Or you were just having such a great time. And I hate clubs. First yeah. of all, I hate public places where people are partying and yeah. and drinking. Despise it. I go in because I'm with my boys hanging out, and you're just. I dance, bro. Your energy, tra- it was like moving through me. Like I was, tra- I was yeah. like moving because Rob was dancing. It's a weird thing. And every- it happens with everybody that I see you with. No. Literally, I can't see you go on vacation with anybody without 15 stories popping up of bro, people I- acting a fool on the back deck of a so Cabo for example, house. We're, we're talking about like, we're talking about taking ownership, right? So for a long time, I didn't dance. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. I'm going to tell you the, the, where I was going with that Vegas okay. club story. Just my, my brain, when it comes I to like me, I got to grab it. Um, so Rob and I are hanging out, having a great time. I'm having just a great time at a nightclub. It was the weirdest thing in the world. <laughs> Rob goes to the bathroom, and uh, he disappears for a little bit, and he comes back super startled, like just a little bit, still dancing, but just a little bit startled. <laughs> I was like, are you good, man? No, we went to the bathroom together. That was the best part. We went to the bathroom together. I was in the bathroom. Rob comes in. Here's I, I'm remembering the story correctly now. Damn, I'm in the man. bathroom. I'm nervous I'm in about the bathroom. this whole fucking story. Just, just, you know, having a great night. And I hear this rustling and bustling through the hallway, through the door of the bathroom, oh, people yeah. hooting and hollering. Yep. I had to dance to the bathroom. Rob breaks through the bathroom door, sweaty and flustered and dancing. And he's like, I had to, I had to break through a dance wall to get in here. And he was so <laughs> sincere and so concerned. Like, what if they wouldn't have let me? Yeah. <laughs> like, I wasn't going to, I was going to pee my pants. And dude, it was one of the greatest memories of my life because it was such a dumb thing, yeah. but you made it so fun, and that goes into what you were just about yeah, to say. Yeah, dancing, and I, th- I think that's with, like, when you when you get people having emotion inside themselves that are, like, bitter, 
And like, I didn't dance my whole life. I just didn't do it. I was like, I don't dance. I'm, I'm too big, right? Like, I'm a bigger guy. And when I dance, I'm not that good. We can all agree on that. No, that's not true. And I know that people look at me and they're like, look at that fucking idiot. Like, look at that giant on the dance floor who can't dance. So I was always like, dancing, dancing for queers, right? So I'd be the dude sitting with Dana, looking at dudes on the dance floor, be like, that dude can't even fucking dance. <laughs> but I'm not dancing, right? Mm -hmm. And I had that, like, chip on my shoulder, like I was too cool. And then Dana eventually convinced me to start dancing. I started dancing. I was like, you know what, dude? Like, I don't care what I look like on this dance floor. Once again, I'm on my ride. I'm the one in control of my life. And I'm dancing. And you see those dudes, and I know what their wife's thinking. Their wife's like, man, I wish my husband was a dumb idiot on the dance floor right now doing yeah. that. Like, that dude's having so much fun. And that's enabled me to dance now. And then we perfected it. <laughs> well, you perfected it, bro. Well, you I know, are but the, we... The, we we started our relationship like that, getting you dancing. We did start dancing, yeah. Dude, the silly gorilla moves that I see coming out of the videos when you guys are together is just <laughs> it's, ridiculous. Dude, it's a blast, bro. We have so much fun. It's a blast. It's fun to watch. Um, while we have it pulled up here. While oh, we're what are we it, pulling? Oh, the, the, it, bro. This is the... This is you as a child abuser. Oh, here we go. I hope this episode doesn't go viral. <laughs> here right. we go. Rob's favorite video. <laughs> Look, Look at that black eye. Look at her eye. Hi, Look at her eye. I'm the leader of the pack, and all my other siblings just be riding on my back. I'm basically the parent I keep. She, I think she took a soccer ball to the face. A or a fist. My shoes, they always shine. Oh the my god. <laughs> Look at Callie. She's Bro. got. Rules were made for us to break, which really shook. <laughs> <laughs> These girls look like they're being held captive. Yeah. Oh, that was definitely. I mean, look at the comments, bro. 6,700 comments. How do you get a newborn? Even she looks like she has a black eye. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Pause this real quick. Go to those comments. Go to the comments. I like that you liked it. <laughs> I that I meant to hit. Why does the oldest have a black eye? Middle was seeking something, squid games. Something seems off. Why? Something's wrong here. Why does the oldest have a black eye with 50,000 likes on the <laughs> comment? Something seems off. 38,000. Something's wrong here. <laughs> Something feels off. We're all getting the same. Just a bunch of pissed off Just women, dude. They, dude, one. and it's all the... There's 7,000 comments, <laughs> and every one of them are like, this guy is not... Uh, this is well, not There's one okay. that said, you got to chill out. That's it. Yeah, there's a bunch that come to defend him here. Uh... Two, uh, I like when people like that person was like two. The kids probably fought earlier, yeah. and they like they're trying to make up scenarios where this isn't <laughs> where wrong. He's yep. not beating his children. Was with all the bruises, weird body language, and indirect eye contact. <laughs> this ain't right. <laughs> Are they okay? <laughs> and I, I remember this day because you're like, my kids just were having fun. They Did, wanted my daughters to were like, this. Dad, will you put a TikTok of us of something's us wrong? Dancing? I can feel it. <laughs> Something ain't right here. This is incredible. I'm going to spend all night reading these comments. Jeez. That's that's uh, fantastic. Okay, great. Yeah. So well, so we showed the video. What did we, we learn from that? that? Yeah. What did we learn? What did we learn from that? That you should dance, right? It all I full actually circle. have this question for you. Do you, have, do you believe in consequences? No. Absolutely not. At all. Well, you answered no. that so fast. No. I know. And I knew that was going to be the I don't, answer. I don't believe in abiding by rules, and I don't believe in consequences. <laughs> I yeah. think there's hurdles, but I don't think there's real Wait, consequences. But there's I'm also not talking about motivational, like, ooh, that's a hard thing. I need to get over it. I'm talking about black no. and white rules. There's uh, also good consequences. No. Right? But, to be face, fair, positive. but to be fair, you don't either. You don't abide by any rules, and you don't believe in rules. To an extent. But he doesn't no. believe in consequences. No, no. I do. I, do. I, don't, you, I approach life more, more calculated w uh, towards consequences than you do. No way. 1,000%. There's not a chance. Hold on. Hands? All of your closest friends are in this room. Hands. Let's take a vote. Hands? It depends on the topic. Okay, then that's the answer. Who I want. has that's total the, disregard uh, for consequences? Consequences on when it comes to content, this guy. Okay, okay. You're the absolute worst. You're okay, I, listen, I accept it. All I'm yeah, saying we're, is we're, we're, we're very, like, we're very gonna similar. That later. We're, we're very similar. We do not believe in rules. Even the way I was driving today. My assistant was like, you really don't abide by any rules here. And I'm do, you like, think no. that, do you think that's to your detriment sometimes? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Are you working on that? No. <laughs> Aren't those consequences? No. As far as consequences, you get is pulled it? over for speeding. Isn't that a no, consequence? No, I'm not working on it, and here's why. <laughs> because I'm really, really happy with where I'm at in my life and what I've been doing. Well, has is been there a so trail of tears behind you? There is might there a be. wake of destruction that, oh. you, that, you, could, that you could remedy? 
No. No, not there's without no wake of not, destruction behind him. No. And I also don't think Who's there's in the wake of destruction. There's no wake of destruction in 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 so you're saying anything that he does that's wrong there's no consequences? So I I don't I don't think he does things wrong to hurt people. I'm not saying why he does things. I'm just no, saying No, 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 no. I don't I don't think there's 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 no victim in what he does. I disagree. Who's the victim? Name a victim. Um one the, example the is township? the some sponsors back in the day on the TV show. You had a tendency to get stuff move on. They would call us like, "Hey, what the hell's going on?" And this is this is a completely this is a completely sidebar topic from where I was going with this. I'm asking you if you look back and you move aggressively through life, yeah. so do I. This yeah, isn't yeah. about who does this. No, you know, no, I just want to be clear. We're both on the same page. For sure, one thousand percent. Okay. I, this is a question that I'm asking you that okay. I ask myself. Okay. And this is actually something that I've been working on a ton. As do you think that if you were to look back and try to figure out a way to to be less destructive to mitigate forward, the destruction? Yes. No. You don't see any benefit in that. I think there's probably different outcomes, but I also think my life wouldn't be what I've created it to be today. You don't feel like destruction could catch up with you, though? No, not the way that I live my life. This is not me accusing you. No, I know. I, 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 I'm I, genuinely thinking... answering the question. No, I don't. I, I think that even to this day, I don't think that there's anything I've done in my past that would catch up to me and be like, oh, shit, I really wish I wouldn't have done that. You know what's funny? You know, I ran into the other day and had a great conversation with Who? Steve Maxfield. Oh, yeah, that was a good example. Yep. of that was good. So that was your destruction, though, not mine. I've been friends with him. No, mm. you were there when the sheriff, his make believe sheriff was in the living room. I know, but he him. texts me randomly once a month. I know, but that after that, we never really dealt with. Him. But but this is to answer that question, because I actually am answering that question. Honestly, is that someone that I want in my life or that I care ever again to have or that if any consequence of our relationship was disrupted, I would want back? I'm going to answer this for you because you actually just this case study, this little example I just gave is the perfect demonstration of you had the ability to mend fences with people pretty quickly if you yeah. had to, regardless of how shitty the situation Whatever was. Whatever it was. Yeah, so... I went five years or how long it was without speaking to this dude because I had to cut him out completely because yeah. I didn't like the way that he did business. Because we both did the same thing to him. Right. But, but you've, been, you've been in contact with him. You yeah. text him, you're saying once a month or whatever. Yeah. And I chose to completely cut him out of my life forever. Yeah. And then when I saw him again, I was healed and I was good. I, I can't stay mad at people. Yeah. I don't. I just forget that they exist. Yeah. I'm the same. But to answer the question again, no, I really don't think if I went back and talked to my younger self and was like, hey, bro. You burn a lot of things down to the ground, and because you don't care about the rules or the way things are supposed to be done, like you've burned a lot of things to the ground, I don't even think I would go back to him and say, hey, dude, you should do things I think differently. The thing is, I think you're already doing it, though, to a certain extent. I think there's things that you could do better, but I think the reason why you've gotten to the point is you cannot be as destructive as you are and continue to, to be successful without something happening, somebody coming after you. You pit to pit. I've noticed this, like the vindictive people that are out there. Like when somebody gets hurt by us and yeah. it's usually, we don't even mean to, yeah. it's just a bull in a China shop. Sorry. You were a teapot. I knocked you off the table. Like I wasn't, I, you were, I did not mean to affect you as bad as you, as apparently did. And those people hold grudges and they stay upset forever. And, and then I've found that, you know, since it's a small world, we're always saying it. And it's so true, dude, you, you piss off the wrong person. They have a cousin who has a friend at the FAA and, then all of a sudden, boom, like it's, yeah. it's your life is miserable. But I also think in that lifestyle of not abiding by like, I would say societal rules. I think that's kind of what we're talking about. I also don't abide by those societal rules that, that make that relationship burn to the ground. Like I, I, for example, if I burned something or I did something or I just destroyed something, I would also have zero issue with showing up at that person's door and having a conversation with them and being like, hey, man. How are you doing? And they'd be blown away. They'd be like, we just got in a fist fight. I don't ever want to talk to you again. I just wanted to see how you were doing. Because mm -hmm. I don't abide by the rule that's like, well, because we're pissed off, we're not going to talk to yeah. each other. And I'm also going to hold a grudge, and you're going to hold a grudge. Yeah, I, you're, I don't really do that. You're oddly diplomatic by nature. Yeah. I don't think you even know it or try. In fact, I think you hate being diplomatic when you need, like when it's the, the, the what do they call them, the, get the niceties niceties when you're saying nice things like being the pleasantries when you're talking with people yeah like the just the the fluffy bullshit yeah like you just 
you naturally are good at it, but if you get pushed to have to do it, yeah, oh, you lose I your shit. Don't like that. No, yeah. Just so I'm fired, I gotta take back what I said. You're not a. You don't take a to get ahead of <laughs> You're definitely gonna get fired. Yeah, no. You're just a bull in the china shop. I just have to get creative sometimes. That's what, that's his I thing. think he's bull a bull. In the china shop, as far as like he just there's just destruction. All uh, everywhere. Because he's 100 miles an hour. But I also think realize, it's not anything major. It's always just like stupid little stuff. Yeah, I agree. But and I think I do the same thing. I'm a bowl in a china shop and I destroy shit because I don't abide by rules, which are the rules are come in, walk gently, do this, don't move over here, you'll break this. The problem I, is I don't abide by any of those rules. My wake of destruction I found is bigger unfortunately because people have really high expectations of me. Yeah. So, if somebody has an encounter with me and they it's not mm-hmm. perfect and they didn't get exactly what they wanted like Hans has seen me get screwed over so many times, like over and over and over and over. Um, and there's people that say I screwed them over, right? There's it's business is hard sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you end up in a deal where they, it's like your employees get paid or the company that you owe them the money to their employees get paid. Like, well, I, my loyalty is to these people like you have. And that's, you know, viewed as bad business and you're screwing yeah. people over. But sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you just have to make hard choices. And, and when it comes to business, that's what I found is, uh, it, dude, it's those hard. <laughs> we, I'm just dumb enough to go to those hard situations and not really view how hard it could be. Like with the what ifs, I don't do the what ifs yeah. on the bad side. I don't do what if negative things at all, at all. Yeah. I don't play the hypothetical if this happened, did that happen? I just, this is what I want, and I'm going to go for it. But I have the same question, though, for you that you asked me. Would would you go back? I'm starting to. I'm starting to. I'm starting to realize, and this is more because it's kind of selfish motives, but it's making my life much easier and much more pleasant when I, when I go back and if, if there's a relationship that can be fixed. Like, yeah. it's a good example, and it's a sad example, is Jared Sorensen, he sued us. Um, just a sad deal. He was yeah. a good friend. In fact, we should talk about him a little bit because I know there's a lot of listeners that probably know um, Jared. And we can kind of get into that situation because I know everybody's heard this side of the story, that side of the story. You guys okay if we get into that? Yeah. Um, Jared Sorensen, for those of you who don't know, he was a good friend of ours for a long time. Just the He's like a Rob Bailey type of guy. Everybody loved him. Big presence, tall. Just a, just, you never handsome, met Jared, right? Handsome, you never knew good dancer. Yeah, super handsome, yeah. good dancer. Jared was like the guy that put together all the events. He was just the life of the party. Um, he was also very prideful. Like, probably the most proud person I've ever met. And um, we'll get to that, why that was a bad thing. It's a sin, right? Pride, pride. There's a reason for it. Too. Pride is there's a, a reason sin. why pride is a sin. Because you have a whole the, month for the it The form of yeah. pride that he took was, the, the, like, the poster child of, prideful sin like yeah. it just wasn't good um but he had so much so many talents and he was such, such a good heart and people loved him so he came on um dave and i started this business in 2000 well we started working together in 2008 and the business kind of just evolved over the years from digging you know holes in the dirt with excavators to buying and selling junk cars and then uh we started buying some cooler stuff because we got a little bit more money Start making videos, put those videos online. People loved them. We had freaking the business, whatever whatever that business was, right? Jared comes to us, and um, he's a good friend of ours, and he's seeing that we're going viral all over the place, and he's like, I want in, I want in, I want in. And from day one, I said, Jared, I don't want a partner. Like, um, I'm not good with partners. Like, I, I just, I'm not a good partner. I'm a terrible business partner on so many levels. I'm a great business partner, and I'm getting better. But it's, I'm just a hard person to work with. And that's I, I tried to make this painfully clear to him. He wouldn't accept it. Dave sat in on these meetings. I sat in on these meetings. I remember. I may, I couldn't have made it more clear. Yeah. I'm not giving any equity. I will pay you as much as you want. I will let you run the show. Because he was a great operator, dude. The guy was incredible. At He's such a creative guy. He put all these things together. And I truly believe that Diesel Sellers, the, the website business, would have been significantly more successful if Jared would have stayed on and focused on building the business rather than trying to take the business over. And unfortunately yeah. in 2013, um, it's after four or five, six months of begging me for ownership and me just basically saying, no, he tried to do this weird hostile takeover, um, where he brought in this attorney to form the company documents. And we let this guy in like way in turns out they had kind of like a little side deal where, 
Jared was going to basically say, if you can get me equity in the company, then I'll give it, I'll give some back to you. So they pulled this bullshit, like emergency meeting where they presented this operating agreement and they were like, we need to sign this right now or all hell's going to break loose and we're going away. And it was such a weird threat. And we like weren't even really a business yet. We were still just kind of figuring out how to sell t-shirts. So I was like, no, we're done gone like like this is not going to work so i cut him out of everything of the bank like changed the locks no access for jerry whatsoever said you're done you're terminated and then he filed a lawsuit um essentially saying that i uh, well his first claim was that i kicked him out of his business that he started and i just took it over i'm like a squatter in his business mm. and then that 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 um lawsuit slowly evolved you know, quickly evolved his thing was he would go fight because jared had no money he would go find an attorney because Jared was an incredible salesman. It's all he should have been doing is just selling. The dude could have been, had the happiest life if he would have just stuck to selling. But he he would go find these attorneys and he would convince them that he had equity in Diesel Brothers. And this was right as the TV show was taking off. Like Jared, Jared, unfortunately, his timing was terrible. And we had to get rid of him about six months before our lives changed with the TV show and everything like that. And he saw that happen. And he was just left in the dust. And it wasn't anybody's fault but his own. He tried yeah. this, this bullshit takeover. And that's actually how I met my partner, Cole um, Cannon. Uh, he was an attorney for a friend of mine. And it's the first time I'd been big sued. I'd had, like, little stuff. So I was like, I don't know what to do. What are we going to do? This guy's trying to take over my business. And then, um, you know, he defended us. And Jared would go to find these attorneys and that obviously thought they had this huge claim to to – the diesel brothers name and so they would go do it on contingency they'd get in there they'd start defending him go to trial and then the facts would come out like our side of the story and you i remember being in the hearings watching his attorney just be like like bro why why didn't you tell me that or like (laughs) how come that wasn't part of the discovery just not good stuff for jared and so i think he went through like four or five different attorneys that he convinced how long was the lawsuit bro 10 years the lawsuit started in 2013. I think the final judge, um, who just basically said, like, you are not allowed back in this courtroom in a no, no configuration, because he would keep on trying to find little loopholes. Essentially, they completely stopped him, I want to say, maybe a year ago. Um, oh, wow. yeah, so 10 years. And what's really sad is he died a few months ago of an overdose. And the last 10 years of his life were so freaking sad, dude. Like... He isolated, self-isolated completely from everybody. Nobody knew. They didn't find his body for eight days. Oh, shit. Nobody knew, knew that he was dead. He was just in his bed alone. And, dude, <laughs> there's there's never been a more, like, poignant example to me of what hate and resentment can do. Dude, he freaking just destroyed his life. Yeah. And then he died alone. Wow. Well. I don't know anything about the story, and that was heavy. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just uh, <laughs> it sucks that people have to get to that point to learn. Like he was never going to learn. Like Jared was. <laughs> Could you have told him anything? No, I mean I remember I was actually in that last meeting that you were talking about with the lawyer, and I I even remember that time because it was right as I had come on. And I remember sitting there, and I remember thinking of how it was the first time I had respect for Dave because I remember sitting in a meeting with you, the lawyer, and me, and I was in there for a different meeting for something else, and the lawyer was pressing and pressing and pressing on you about getting that document signed. And I remember you looking at me like, I cannot understand why he's trying to force me to sign this contract. And then from there until last year, like it was always, it was his whole life was, I just have to sue them and, and I have to get what I'm owed. And it was, it was a miserable life for the last yeah, 10 years. Was, and the reason why I brought that up is because I was trying to think about examples in my life where I can't stay mad at people. My wife and people that are close to me get frustrated sometimes because I just want to, I don't have the energy for it. And if someone's going to be in my life, if they have to be there, then I'm not going to be upset with them. Dude, why? Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. Dude, that Jared thing. <laughs> I remember, do you remember this? I can't remember if you were in there. Um, 
we had a mediation with the judge before like before the big trial happened <laughs> and uh the judge pulls us back into the chambers and he's talking to us and jared has his judge and there's another judge with us and um our judge is like um He's, he's talking to us about how important it is to try to settle and, like, don't take this to trial. Like, and, he, and he starts telling us this example of, uh, I think this is when we were still together in the same room with Jared and everybody, and the, and the judge, like, completely changed course from what he was saying to tell the story. And he's like, I, I, was, uh, I had a case in here 30 years ago of an of a old man who his next door neighbor had a tree that was growing over his fence and it um, just kind of kept growing over his fence. And no, 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 it was the tree with the power line. Yeah, okay, here. The the power company wanted this man to, to cut, to trim his trees because they were growing. And the man fought it and was, you know, just angry about it. And the judge says that he, he's like, I watched, I watched as this man poured his whole life savings into fighting this. And he got a divorce, and he lost his house, and like his whole life fell apart because he was fighting over this fucking tree growing into a power line. And he just he thought that he thought that uh, it was a noble cause, a no, you know, he was fighting for nature, he was fighting for what was right, and uh, ultimately he just ended up wasting his whole life away and being miserable and losing everything. And I remember the judge told us all of this, and he was essentially telling the story directly to Jared because he'd seen how uncooperative he was. And I just remember thinking like, man, that's, that's a rough example. I don't know why I had to use that. It turns out our example is worse. Yeah. Well, and, and, and the, the rest of that story is that after the guy dies, the tree gets cut down and the power line wins anyways. There's no legacy. And he wasted his entire life chasing that. And he became so bitter because dude, if you go after something and you, you, in order to, to to fight something for that long, you gotta convince yourself that you hate it. Yeah, and you gotta convince yourself that it's a no. Like, then you'll lose motivation because hate's not powerful enough. Then it has to become a cause. Then yeah. it has to become a legacy. And you watched as uh, I watched firsthand as Jared went down this just miserable road where, yeah, things didn't work out exactly the way that they, you know, he wanted them to. But dude, if he could have just shook that, just just the could haves and should haves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've started to get to the point in my life where like time isn't really real. Like the past isn't real yeah. to me anymore. All that matters is what I'm doing right now. Yeah. That's not to say that the past doesn't have consequences, but you find so many people that are hung up on what happened or what you did or what you said or whatever it was. And it's like, that's not real anymore. Yeah, You can't change it. Yeah. It's not real anymore. And, and I can do, I can be me right now and I can choose to do exactly, you know, whatever I feel is right. Um, and if, if that's not the same behavior that I had back then, that's a good sign because that means I'm growing. Yeah. That means I'm becoming self-aware, becoming self-aware. Do you know what that means? You ever think about that? Becoming self-aware. Yeah. You guys ever think uh, about every day? That's all I think about every day. That's really? all I think about. Yeah. I think it took me a long time to, to, to realize what self-awareness was. Yeah. And I think that's a, probably a sign of autism. So <laughs> probably somewhere on the spectrum. I definitely think you're on there. Um, I, I've always been self-aware. I, I think I've been hyper self-aware. The problem is it's just, it's just kind of, it's this one way yeah. and that's it. And I just kind of set on autopilot and that's just the way things are for me. And that's how my surroundings are, my relationships. And I just kind of like, there's a lot of energy to dive into it. Right. Like yeah. for a guy who burns through energy really quickly <laughs> because everything I do, I either have to do it. 100% balls in passion or I can't. And so when you go balls in, when you run the blender on high, the batteries run down much faster is what I'm starting to realize. And so becoming self-aware is fun is where I'm going with this. Yeah, but becoming self-aware is the only way to true progress because it's the only way why'd to you, actually. Why'd you throw a button there? What do you mean self-aware? That should have been an and. What? You said, yeah, but self-awareness. Well, I'm just saying to finish out what you were talking about, it's that's not just you, become self-aware. And. Become self-aware and you find true progress. Yeah. Like when you said, I think about it every day, the reason he thinks about it every day, why I think about it every day is because we're fairly similar in one thing. We, mm-hmm. we seek progress in everything. Yeah. And the only way to seek true progress is to become self-aware because it's the first metric. And if you're not checking metrics, there's no progression. Yeah. How do you become self-aware? When you say self-aware, you're talking about like evaluating yourself, figuring out what 
knowing you're aware of what yeah, you knowing do why you do situations. things. I fa- and that's yeah. the thing. That's the problem. You have to. You have to. For me, anyways, I had to break it down to like a kind of a micro level of. Give me an example, right in my yeah. head. What is self awareness? And it's when I say something to somebody. In the past, I would just say it because that's the word or the thoughts that came out. And becoming self aware is. It's either before you say it or while you're saying it or at any point during the process. A filter. Thinking about what those words are going to mean to the other person. And not just like literally, but what's your tone? What's the context? And that's be, that's the fun part of becoming self-aware because once you get good at it, you can start to manipulate it yeah. in a good way. Yeah. That, and that's where you see like master salesmen. And well, I don't even think manipulation is the right word. I think change. That's where you can change it. You can manipulate the self-awareness because you can, it's NLP, basically. Neuro-linguistic programming. Uh You're essentially, you're essentially, you know what your thought or or action towards (laughs) somebody, you know what response that's going to elicit. And you can kind of use that as a way to get people to... For good or for bad. For good or for bad. NLP is a very powerful thing. That's how Tony Robbins got started. Um, And I think, honestly... NLP really is just being super self-aware yeah, and educating your, and having some sort of format to follow. Yeah. But it is really fun. And when I say manipulate, I mean a, in a good way because you'll see people that uh, – Obama, great example. He was a uh, – he was like next level when it came to that type of communication. He could read a room. He could know exactly how to deliver the – you know, that's – so that's the – I think a lot of people think when you hit 30 or 40, you're kind of like peeking out in your career and life and whatever, right? Or that's what our parents were taught. Mm. And, man, I find it, it's the complete opposite. This is, these are the fun years. Yeah. Yeah. This is really so fun because you're finally not a, just a dumb idiot bumbling through life. <laughs> you're just a little less dumb. Yeah. And, and that makes you freaking dangerous. Yeah. Dangerous right? is a good word. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think that that, that's, that's what I've realized is uh, I think my self-awareness started maybe like three or four years ago. And it's because we've all built our own little universes, right? Like, and who's in them. And when I say I'm on my ride, it's like realizing I'm on a ride. The decisions I make affect a lot of people. Yeah. And I can make extremely powerful decisions really, really fast and make things happen. And with like that wake that Keaton has, right, that we are saying – or like the things, how it affects everyone else around you. And my quest started with like, I need to figure out why I'm doing some of these things. Because if I'm just doing them because Rob Bailey's a maniac and he just wants to see this happen or he gets his brain set on something, like I have to have an understanding of why I'm doing it because I know there's going to be consequences, whether that's positive or negative. And like, I want to make this the most positive ride for everybody. And a lot of that came from like realizing that I'm a powerful motherfucker like realizing that I can show up in rooms and I can have really cool effects on people or I can be a complete fucking asshole. Yeah, you have that. Right? So if I don't... What are you? Do, you, do we ever do the human design thing with well, I'm you? not an asshole. We discussed that. <laughs> I don't think you're an asshole. No, I no. I think you're a really nice but guy. But I think the same thing, right? Like those those little... In, uh, like w- looking in someone's eyes, remembering their name and asking them a question as opposed to just like going through the motions of the conversation. Yeah. Like that that impact, especially from someone like you, right? Like when you meet people, they're just, they've been watching you... I, online forever and yeah. it's like this is the moment that they met heavy d yeah from the show from the internet from all these different things and to you it's just like can i have my french fries right right yep. and That's then you it. get your french fries and you drive away and they're just like he was kind of a f-ing dick right there right and then you shape the rest of their life that they maybe think famous people are dickheads yeah and when you become self-aware like you don't even need to do it because you're fucking perfect right stop you, I mean, you are. You're intera- and that's what that's what I'm concerned about. It's not even manipulating. It's just like, and if I'm gonna have an interaction and I can try a little bit, right, with my power and make it a good interaction, like I want to do that. Yeah, it's a win yeah. for everybody. Yeah. What What's your full name? My oh. f- my full yeah, like my name? social security number. What's your birth name? Robert Brandon Bailey. Robbie. Robbie. He's a good do you guy. know what time you were born? Uh, I do not know. No, sir. Ball Let's park. call your mom. Call your mom. No idea. Call your mother. I think it's late. When is your birthday? No, no, it's only nine. May twenty seventh, nineteen eighty. Joy's not asleep. There's no way. It's so nine thirty eight. Many people have May twenty seventh as a birthday. Bro, if she'll I call, be so excited. No, dude, nine. Here, I'll call her. 
Nine thirty so late for my mom. <laughs> Holy shit. My mom's been asleep two hours now. What year? 1964? 83, bro. She's going to think it's an emergency. Well, that's why I'll answer. <laughs> that's not make it worse. Hi. Hi, young lady. Um, this is Keaton. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm so good. Did I wake you up? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, I had a really, really important question. Tell her it's okay. not an emergency. It, uh, it's not an emergency, so Rob's calm fine. down, Joy. Rob's fine. Oh, he'll be fine after we get this worrying. information. I know you were worried. We didn't think how late it was, but we're doing a really, really big podcast, and you're on air right now. And, oh. and I wanted to ask, what time of day was Rob born? Oh. You only have two children, Joy. <laughs> but that was 40 yes, years it ago. It was around, um, like... About one o'clock in the afternoon. One p.m. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other information that we need, Dave, uh, from his mother? City and state. What city and state was he born in? Uh, Westchester, Pennsylvania. Westchester, Pennsylvania. He was six weeks early. Six weeks early. Okay. We probably need that yeah. information. What did he weigh? He was five and a half pounds oh he was just a small young lad for six and a half weeks early yes. that's pretty big still yeah he yeah i mean for he was a preemie westchester preemie yeah. still five and a half up on yeah. the chart westchester all right well i One didn't word, two words? i, I two didn't words. want him to call you because i knew you'd be mad if he woke you up but i hey, knew you would never be mad at can me. you tell my mom that she just failed no. the test and, what? and i'm never mad at him mom Hey, what? You just you just failed the test. Remember, I taught you about AI, and when people call you, you don't give them my f***ing information. You just failed the test, mom. If anyone calls you and they're like, "Hey, this is Keaton from Rob's phone. Give me all of his information," you just unload it like that. What the? F I've taught you nothing. We should have some bank account numbers for yeah. us. <laughs> Come on, Mom. We're, do you have a I, hard copy of his birth certificate? You know what? I will not let him act like that. I'm so happy that you answered so we could get this information. We're trying about, to figure out. What about out, a social security number? We're trying to figure out live on air um, what type of personality he is Can't and wait. all kinds of things. And we needed this information, and he didn't remember. So I needed to call you. Plus, I wanted to say hello. Well, thank you. I will, uh, I'll okay. let you go back to sleep. Love you very okay. much. And uh, right. hopefully we'll talk soon. Right. Have fun. Bye. 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 Right. She, she just didn't even. She, I'm trying to teach her that like, hey man, they can copy your voice. They can do all these things. And like, I, my, my parents are getting old. She just got smoked. I don't want them to get scammed. Yeah. She gets a call. And it's Keaton calling from my phone. And yeah. she just is like, well, here we go. What do you need to know? <laughs> Fuck, mom. Let me get to the yeah. filing cabinet. <laughs> Take away her phone. Yeah. Okay. So you typed it all in. My hum Do you know what human design is? We've talked about yeah. it before. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What we've never pulled like. your chart. I'm really excited to see this. Any guesses before we get into it? I'm going to guess a manifesting generator. Yeah. Or a reflector. That's what you are, right? I think so. He could be a reflector. It'd be cool to be. Wait, you just know it by what time I was born and everything? Yeah. That's they, the chart. They put all it. The and it's you, like, whatever. You can question if this is voodoo or not. I believe it because it's. Freaking accurate. It is okay. so accurate. It'd be nice to be a fellow reflector, you Let's know? see what is he. Yeah. All right. Reflector, reflector. Ready for this? Whoa. Rob, a generator. Yep. Rob is a generator. I, I, I uh, generator is the most common type. Generators are the people that make the world go around. They're like the, okay. the hustlers. The a generator. Generators basically create energy. Okay. Keaton's a generator. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Your authority is emotional solar plexus. So when you make decisions, you you should be making them based off of how something makes you feel. Yeah, 100%. So what's unique about human design is some of this you'll be like, hell yeah, 100%. And some of it you'll be like, no, that's not me. That's because this is your human design. This basically says these are the types of ways that you should live to maximize your human design. So even if, if something doesn't resonate with you, think like, oh, could I do that? Mm -hmm. And I, what I've done with this chart is I've started to experiment with that. And everything, it's just 100 for 100. I could literally every single thing on my chart that I've tried that it suggests that that's the way I should live, it works. Oh, wow. Establisher really well of knowledge and truth. Yeah, oh. so. That sounds. Official. We're going to call you on a mission. The establisher yeah. of knowledge <laughs> and truth. That's interesting. That's, yeah. I don't really understand that. You can uh, dig into it. It'll talk about like. What it is. It wants me to pay $30. Yeah, if you pay, just. You got to pay. Dave, fee. pay your, your subscription. I have a subscription. This actually, uh, my friend Jenna uh, runs this website, and 
I want to have her on the podcast because she does a really good job at explaining what the hell human design is without making it feel like some voodoo, yeah. right? Um, okay. Because it, it, can, it can become voodoo really quick. Where the hell did it go? You got to pay 30 US chart. dollars. No, you don't have to click on that one. So, um, okay. He's a response. So your strategy is responding. Essentially, you're responding to situations, to things, whatever. You're, okay. What's the other options? Um, the different strategies are... I can't remember. I'll have to look and see. Um, that's not, not self theme. Uh, not self theme. The so basically the, oh, nice. the telltale feeling that happens when you're not living your design is frustration. Mm-hmm. You're not living the rugby, right? Familiar with that, yeah. yeah. Your most important gift, enthusiasm. I could agree with that one thousand percent. Really? Your most yeah. important gift is enthusiasm. One hundred percent, dude. Okay. You affect infect everything it with, pretty with cool. good vibes. Yeah. This goes back to the dance story, yeah. right? All right. Yeah. I like this. You guys are building but me up. You, you've made a living out of it, though, bro. You've made a living that out of it. That is true. Of, yeah, I'm not man. thinking about it right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the number two gift is a yeah. real bad on, buddy. Yeah. The vision for turning ideas into reality. At number yeah. five, marching to your own rhythm. rhythm. All right. <laughs> Might as well be a Mr. dancer. Folklore music. <laughs> uh, focus and precision yep. is a okay. gift. Gift number 10, a love of life. Damn, this is so like spot life. on for I you. I like life yeah. a lot. Uh, gift 11, being an ideas person. I like you ideas. Yeah. Yeah. ideas uh, person. Yeah, I'll take all those. Uh, sign that you're living your design, satisfaction. So mm-hmm. if you're feeling satisfied, gratified, fulfilled, yep. that's it. Um, definition, split definition. There are two distinct different voices inside <laughs> your system. <laughs> this, is, this is really good. Right? This yeah. is really good. Isn't that yeah. insane? Um, the life theme, incarnation, right angle cross of planning, you can get into that. It's a whole... Like, dude, when you look at the chart... I'll show you the chart here in a second, what it actually looks like. It looks like voodoo. Um, digestion, open taste. Digestion is interesting because it tells you the type of food that your body wants mm. the most. Mine that is... That might be the most accurate one of all of these. Open taste. I've like never everything. seen you not eat anything. Bro, I love everything. Yeah, you, I've yeah. literally I seen you everything. eat octopus alive. I love octopus. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Mine says, uh, keep my food as natural and like primitive as possible like gas station food <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> opposite. exactly and that, no but dude when i eat natural food like a handful of fresh berries yeah that's when i feel the best yeah who'd have thought bro who'd have thought <laughs> <laughs> your strongest sense outer vision what does that mean being able to assess what's good okay yeah essentially yeah. what we talked about earlier yeah. inner vision means being able to see yourself and like who you like have a better inner view of, of, of yourself outer vision is incredible that's a, that's so spot on for you Environment, shores, melting pots, places where multiple different elements or cultures come together. I don't know what that means. Uh, it's you're open to, I think, so your shores and your environment is, whitefish, whitefish is a good example because you've got blue collar dudes that are that make 30 grand a year next to you. Oh, yeah. On the other side, you've got yeah. millionaires. Yeah. So you're, you're open to whoever, any yeah. culture. I, dude, yeah. you're, when I've, every time I, I meet like you, culture. you've got a new culture hanging out at your place up there. Are you trying to say because I'm a white guy with dreads? No, I'm trying to say that you attract that means? you attract anybody like Dave. And you are a white guy with dreads. That's exactly why. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, dude, how spot on is this? Though? This it's is really cool. good. Um, so those are the, the main points. But if you get into the chart, dude, the chart just doesn't make any sense. This is the freaking chart. So it's all all connected, like different energy chakras and different things. I don't understand the chart very well. Does it say where my G spot is? Yeah, it's uh, in your brain. Oh. I'm the only one that can understand this chart. But I'll show you later. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of a chart to break down right now. Yeah. I think that's a good one to end on. But I do want to talk to people, or I want to just um, get this to be my checklist out of my last thing, is go figure out what your human design is. Go to myhumandesign.com. That's really uh, cool. It's free. My, okay. my good friend Jenna, uh, Zoe runs it. Jenna is, dude, you guys, when we have her on the show, uh, she's in the UK or somewhere. But she has the most beautiful voice you've ever heard. Like this British accent yeah. is just like can she's we, amazing. Can we do another checklist item? I feel like we spoke on a really important topic about Jared Sorensen, and we didn't give a checklist item to let, it. Let me add this one. So go to uh, myhumandesign.com. You need your full name. You need your exact birth time. So you and might your have to call your place. mom. You got to call your mom. It'd be yeah. a great yeah, opportunity to connect friend. with Joy. I feel like there should be a checklist item for the shit we talked about with the Jer- Jared Sorensen and the life that was led there. My human design. The, there is an element of of closing those loops. I have I have a good one with that that I can I kick Hold myself off. Hold on. A Did lot. I tell you the whole reason? <laughs> this is how my ADD brain works. The whole reason I told the story about Jared. I'm so sorry to cut you off. Hey, fine. 
is I had, um, I got over it quickly. Even when yeah. he was still suing us, I realized that he was just not well and like yeah. just needed to end. Um, and so I, my, 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 my stages of grief with Jared, that whole situation was first stage was anger. Anger mm-hmm. lasted like a week. Yeah. And then it went straight to apathy. Like he, be, he just became dead to me. Didn't exist. Yeah. I hadn't, that, that man was never born is the way that I was living my life. Um, and then, and then I started feeling like this urge to like reach out, like yeah. bury the hatchet. And so I, I, Dave knows I went to him multiple times. I'm like, dude, I'm yeah. thinking I want to call Jared and just give him a hundred grand or give him 50 grand and just like say, sorry, like, sorry, it didn't work out. I, and yeah. I don't know you this, whatever. Um, but unfortunately we couldn't because that would be, that would interfere with the court process and Jared yeah. would, it would, it would just fuel that fire. So I, I, re- I do that a lot. I go back and I'm, I'm finding, I'm finding that as I mend fences, um, some of them can't be fixed. Like Jared was a good example, just couldn't. Um, but I was willing. And so that with that comes a lot of peace. And I basically was able to fully process that chapter of my life and just let it go. Yeah. Learned my lesson and I hold no, it doesn't consume any of my energy. Yeah. I and, think and it's, it's so easy to do. Yeah. Like, and I think that's like the weird thing is how easy it is to make that phone call. I had something very similar. Uh, the company that built my building in, in our headquarters, it was a very, very hard build. We had a bunch of big blow ups and it was like this bad, very contentious. Right. And, uh, the owner of the company, um, I said some really fucking ruthless things to him and in front of his staff and stuff like that, just trying to posture and uh, also to the local, um, architect that was helping me. And I just, it always sat on me that I was like, what? Like, I really was a dickhead. Like, I know what I was trying to accomplish, um, but I was a f-ing asshole. And after we built the building, I spent a year in the building or two years in the building. And I thought to myself, and I was like, you know what? I should f-ing call that guy and just apologize. And for some reason, I didn't. And I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't. And he died in a motorcycle accident Ugh. that week. And I thought to myself, and I was like, like, I don't know what that was. Like, I don't know if he had anything, but like that simple f-ing phone call would have been right. so rad and then when i called uh the architect i was like hey man i know i said some fucked up shit like i know we were fighting a lot but like dude i love the fucking building and i appreciate you and like i just wanted to make sure you know that like we're f-ing rad i see you driving all the time and, and he was like oh yeah dude fine no big deal i also don't know if he was playing it cool but like i've made a habit now the second that i get that feeling it's like oh i'm gonna call and yeah. resolve that and that's part of yeah. that self-awareness power like knowing the impact I built up to what I think I'm a pretty cool rad dude that people look up to, like whether it's legacy or not that I could like, cool. I'm going to take the action. And that's something I see you do all the time where like, yeah, he'll just squash things. And it's like so easy Mm -hmm. to squash something and it makes such a big impact for people. And then also that even if it's a little pressure on you to release that is always like, I feel so much better. Like I didn't realize that was taking up space in me. Yeah. You don't, don't make the mistake that I made and, 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 I actually have never really held grudges, but don't make the mistake that I made of waiting so long to be like really self-aware, like figure out what self-awareness means. Um, Cause it's so cool, dude. Once you, it just gives you all this extra information to work with. And based off that information, you can make better decisions. You can make people feel better. You can have better interactions. It's so much, life is so much better when you're conscious of how your actions and, and, you know, behaviors and words affect other people. Yeah. What's your, what's your, what's your item? I I don't know. I was, I just wanted there to be an item pertaining to that. I don't know what it was. I just, well, I mean, they're they're different things. The Jared thing is, is, um, I think a good checklist item that could springboard from that would be if there's any, if you got any, you know, bumpy, bruised up relationships in your past that you think could use a kind word, squash them, throw it their way because the worst that could happen is, it just bounces off. Yeah. Right. No, but you're going to get the, the, like this, you get the relief, but be careful because if it's not received the way that you think it's going to be received, basically go into it with zero expectations, yeah. go into it or else assuming that the other party that d- wants nothing to do with you, but you get it, you get your part and bro, it's such a relief. Yeah. It really is. Like you said, like a release, like yeah. you're letting go of that toxic yeah. shit that, why are you holding on to it? Why do we hold on to it? To protect yeah. ourselves, right? We want to mm-hmm. protect ourselves from bad things happening to us. We don't want that thing to happen to us again. We don't want somebody to hurt us, so I'm going to be mad. I'm going to, that's the fuel to protect myself. No, 
just be smarter about your interaction yeah. with people. And the, the, when you enter a relationship or an interaction with kindness, everybody can feel it. Yeah. People know it. That's why people love Dave. Every yeah. interaction that he has is like from his heart. Yeah. Literally, he doesn't have hands. He has a, this heart that's just like doing this work for him. And people feel it. They see it. Some of us, it's harder to show. Yeah. Rob's got a thick candy shell. Thanks, man. But it's a, uh, it's, I think you use <laughs> it. Imaginary. He doesn't have one. Tasty. You're, you're, like you said, I, I get the same thing. And I never, the, the reason why I brought up the self awareness was you talked about walking into rooms and, and being big, like just your presence. You could be three feet tall and still have the presence that you have because that's just who you are. I never knew that. I always felt it, right? I always kind of knew that, like, I always just thought that, like, I was noisy or loud or whatever. For whatever reason, the room and the vibe could change when I walked in based off of what energy I was bringing with me. And my wife, um, early on in our marriage, was basically like, dude, when you walk in a room, the, you're, like, changing the entire the t- the entire evening for everybody just based off of what energy you're bringing in, even if I don't say a word. Mm. And that's the worst part. A lot yeah. of times I go to family parties and just like, oh, I don't want to be here and not real pissed or anything. Just like, I'd rather be home. And I brought that energy in with me. Yeah. And all of a sudden the family is like, it's party. Goes it's amp- they're amplifying the energy that I'm not even knowing that I'm putting out. And yeah. now I'm hurting people's feelings and I don't even realize it. Yeah. That's what self-awareness is to me. You're seeing how even just the, your behavior, your actions, your energy, your smile, your frown, whatever it is, dude, what's that doing to people around yeah, you? Yeah. It's like what Ed talks about, the thermometer, the thermostat in the room. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. You have the power to turn it up or turn it down. 100%. Yeah. I like that. So it's a hard one to put a, an actual kind of a checklist item on, but um, I don't even, we'll, we'll come back to the self-awareness thing. I mean, if you know what we're talking about, start. Yeah. But for those of you who don't even know where to Make start, list. I want to come back to that and figure out a, a more strategic way to approach that where it feels attainable. Because I remember hearing self-awareness and just, I think for the longest time, I just thought that I was like, oh yeah, I'm good. I'm self-aware. I'm, 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 I got that covered. Um, and then I thought it was like a fruity voodoo hippie thing, like, yeah. you know, going on my journey. And then I realized that it's just the most important thing, yeah. mm-hmm. literally the most important thing. Took a little lot, but we got there. So our checklist items, create a visual aid to represent the battery or your life bar, whatever it is. Uh, I, I do like the video game life bar, especially since you and I were playing tanks the other day. <laughs> yeah. And the life bar, <laughs> that's a perfect example, yeah. dude. Because um, I think it will help. And then as you create that, figure out what those energy draw moments are and those people and those experiences and what's sucking the energy. Yeah. And then, as you start to play with this, you'll start to understand what types of things, even if it's the similar behaviors, why does one draw your energy faster or not? Because then you can figure out where you're directing your passion, Mm -hmm. whether it's frustrated passion because you're angry with somebody or it's, you know, creative passion, which is, I think you'll find that the more you start to harness that creative passion and let go of the frustrated passion, you can use it a little bit, like you can learn from it. Uh, that's what you should just do. That's all you should do with it, actually, is just learn from those bad relationships, those mm. mistakes, those things that you did wrong, but then come to the reality that they're not real anymore. Yeah. And you are a completely different person today than you were yesterday. Right? It's what they yeah. say your your body completely uh, cycles through its skin cells every seven years or something like I that. I think it's less than that. Yeah, they said that, like, your entire body, Basically, your skin or your yeah, body? Your skin is new every seven years. Yeah, your skin is new like every seven years or something like that. So we're constantly evolving and shedding. So figure out a way to do it. Um, next item is nap. Um, if you nap, we go about you. that one. Do we have to nap? <laughs> if you, yes. If the, the, well, the, the checklist item is if you feel like you can do it responsibly, play around with a 15 to 40-minute nap sometimes. <laughs> um, no later than 3 p.m. ideally. Which, like two to you, four is a Bro, did you time. know that when we got home from Florida – I told my wife I got home. I was just kind of tired from the flight, whatever. I was like, I'm going to lay down for like 90 minutes because I had to go up to the family thing. They were going to retreat. And uh, next thing I know, I wake up and it's like dark out. They're like kind of dark, getting dark. I'm like, oh, I slept way too long. So I got up and went to pee real quick. And then I laid back down for a second. And then I woke up again and it was light. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, what's happening? I woke up at 12 on Monday. So you were out cold. I fell asleep at 3 p.m. on Sunday afternoon. 
and woke up with 12. It's a 21 hour nap. I felt, I, I literally felt like I went back in time. I felt like, (laughs) I felt like I might be retarded for now. I feel like this is how life is now. Like I, I, I broke, I broke the system. (laughs) Nothing was working. It was like, it literally felt like my brain was rattling around in my head. It was like the worst day of my life. So I, I suggest don't do that. Yeah. Hated it. So no 21 hour naps. No, they don't work. No. They, they make you. All right. Noted. They make you really, Noted. really, really question life. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. So yeah, none of those. Uh, go to myhumandesign.com, enter your name, your birthday, your birth time, your birth location, and you will get a really cool chart of uh, some interesting stuff. I'm going to touch more on that in another podcast when we can have Jenna on because it's it's helped me a ton and I am super skeptical of astrology and stuff like that so uh this is something that you know I live my life by the very simple uh what are they by by, by their fruits you shall know them yeah so if the fruits of something are good mm-hmm. right they must be an okay thing mm-hmm. whether the whether the tree is is great or not I don't know the fruits are good and that's that's all first, I focus the first on. First, good. The tree must be good. Yep. Yeah. Well, sometimes. Well, I think that's what that means. Yeah. Um, fruit, you know. Them. And then the final item. What do we add about Jared? Oh, oh go 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 fix a go fix a bro- broken Men, relationship. Mend a relationship. Mend a relationship. Squash, the beef. Squash, the um, beef. squash the beef. Squash the beef. Squash the beef. There you go. I like, I like that. that. Squash the beef. And don't let shit linger because you yeah. won't know one day when you wake Waste up. Waste the time. Have the chance to fix that. Do you guys see? You just try to. Do the pen on my chest just now. I I tried to tap the pen and then it slipped off my slippery shirt, and so it just went. And then it never tapped, and so that's because you slept too long the other day. It probably was. I'm still getting my (laughs) brain rattled back. (laughs) My dexterity is still a little. (laughs) All right, squash the beef. Okay, well this was a cool chat. Yeah, I wasn't planning on crying, so there's that. Well, I liked it. First time, good little release there, huh? First time. Yeah, it's it's one of those situations where we kind of touched on it over the years, but we've never been able to like close the chapter because Jared was still fighting. I mean, the Dude. last, the last update we were able to provide was he's still going and he's not doing well. Yeah. Brutal. And then, so uh, it really sucks, but he's at peace now Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's, that's what matters. Um, yeah. I didn't go to his funeral and it's, it wasn't personal. It's, we had some filming that we couldn't miss, but I also, I didn't want to be that guy because everybody knew about our beef. Yeah. And I didn't want to be, it was like, damned if I do, damned if I don't. If yeah. I show up, his family's going to be pissed. If I don't, I look like an insensitive prick. So it was one of those things where I just had to make the call and say, I have a good reason to not be there, so I'm, I'm not going. But I think you telling that story just now was a good release for you. That's for sure, yeah. I watched it happen. It definitely felt like a good yeah. release. So um, thank you, Robert. Looking forward to your new music. No problem, buddy. Our new music. That's also checked. Uh, yes. Ours. Make songs. What was it Robert Buckingham Bailey? What was your middle name? Robert Buckingham. The, I'll change the it. The Lord of Folklore. Brandon. Folklore. The folklord. The folklord, <laughs> bro. If you get the title of folklord, I don't even know what that would I, I'll come. tell you. The Lord of Folklore. We, when we get a real song out with a music video, you're going to be the folklord. All right. Yeah, we'll start. Or do we start our own band out. called the Folklords? No. That's Rob's. <laughs> the two fo- I'm thinking about maybe starting a band. I think you should, dude. You, you can do it? anything. Thanks, man. Be heavy on harmonica. <laughs> heavy on And heavy with that, we. We're not doing anything. What is that button? Try these really cool sounds. <laughs> there you there go. There we go. I turn them up a little bit. And that's a wrap. And that's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in.